everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Games Attack Podcast. This is episode 30 called Hellblade 2 Snooze Fest. And we are here in my studio. So welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I don't have the cheering? Yeah, I do got the cheering. There we go. I got the cheering. I got to up the cheering. Hold on. Let's up the cheering. Yeah. Going up the cheering too much. How's it going, everybody? How's it going? Yes, it's good, guys. Enjoy your day, man. Yep, yep, yep. Oop. Wrong, wrong thing. Wrong, wrong thing. There we go. Gotta learn this. Looks like you're fucked. Thank you, Nukem. Thank you very much for that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Dude, go fuck yourself. Okay, Cartman. You could shut up now. Welcome, everybody. This is a podcast about gaming and not me just playing around with my uh, technology here and trying to figure out stuff. Uh, I got my microphone in a new position that I very much like. Originally, I had it off to the side here and I had it underneath the table bending up. But it was having some issues keeping the microphone uh, in my face properly. So now I have it connected to the middle of my desk because I got now an L-shaped desk. And it's connected right in the middle of that L-shaped desk, actually helping hold the two desk pieces together. Not that they need any help, but it's right there in the middle. And if I want to get rid of this microphone, I just bend it all the way down, all the way under the table, and it doesn't bother me one bit. Or I can bend it all the way up right to the camera part uh and it still doesn't bother me because the monitors in it such where they're like an l shaped even though they're curved monitors i still got that little black part in the middle of, of the two monitors it, it just blends right in with those so I, I could do i could put my microphone away any way possible i could even bend it down here i like this bendable arm here on the mic i know you can't really see it from the camera but uh yeah, this is probably a better way because now I could talk to you guys and do my uh, podcast and I'm, I did uh, my live stream uh, video uh, Friday where I did uh, my Game On session and I did Game On with some more Fortune Street, which I'm thinking this for upcoming Friday, I'm probably going to go into the wasteland again, play some Fallout. And then... Uh, beyond that, I got other stuff that I might be playing. I might be playing some Command and Conquer, maybe finally again, and a whole bunch of other stuff I want to try out um, going forward from that. But we're here, um, still kind of recovering from my sickness on Friday. Well, it was like Thursday, fr- Thursday night, Friday. Uh, my throat's still a little iffy. I got, I still got like some neck issues and stuff. It's all because of my sinuses. If you have sinuses, oh, that's the worst. And no medication. I try all the different kinds of nasal stuff, um, pills, stuff like that. And it seems like nothing works. But I, I got really sick again on a Thursday night into Friday. And I did go to work Friday morning. And uh, But I was mostly better Friday night. But still, I, I was feeling a little like crap. And I still kind of... <clears throat> have the little bit of eh, eh, in me from the, you know, the the badness that is my sinuses still going on. And when you get a sinus cold and you get sinus sick and stuff, it could get really bad for some people. And I'm one of those people that gets really bad for it. Doesn't matter how well I take care of my body and take care of myself, how well I eat, how much I wash my hands, use whatever you know stay away from sick people i still for some reason it all has to do with the mucus the news stuff like that you know the gross stuff but we're not here to talk about that i'm here to talk about video games on this podcast and uh we're going to talk about all the games that i've uh dabbled in played what i'm going to continue playing what i'm going to not play anymore vice versa and such so we might as well get into that now so let me see if i can get that here right now the games that have been played in the past week
That's a good game. Enjoy your gaming. Okay. Games that I played in the past weeks since the last time I had a podcast on. I uh, played a bunch of them. Been playing, of course, more Fallout 4 uh, via my ROG Ally, PC, having a ball, especially when I can use uh, the council commands and still ha- get achievements from doing so. So I could cheat, still have some fun um, finding new areas and doing stuff that I never did in the original playthroughs of Fallout 4 because I played through Fallout 4 many times on a console and I beat it multiple times. Uh, now that I'm playing on PC and, uh, you know, I did it, you know, I had some mods going on for to still get some of achieve, my achievements on this because you could get brand new achievements for it if you play the PC version and I don't care. Um, and using the counts commands to be, you know, invincible and getting as m- many bullets and stuff in a gun as possible it just makes the game a whole lot more tolerable in the beginning. And it's a whole lot of fun just going out there, being able to be the biggest badass ever and knowing that you're never going to die or anything. And you could go and do all the missions that you did do before or you didn't do. And there was a lot of missions in Fallout 4 that I still haven't fi- found before. And now I am and just doing them now. And, oh, oh, Fallout 4 is so much better when you just got nothing but power behind you. And, you know, you'll have the naysayers saying, Oh, cheating is wrong, Mr. Mike. Cheating is bad. And you know what I say to those people? I say, hey, cheating is only bad when it affects other people. If it's only affecting moi, me, then there's no no cheating. I know people say, but you're cheating yourself out of the fun. And I'm like, I had the fun basically three times already doing it on a gaming console. So... My fourth time, now on PC and the Rog Ally, I should be allowed to play the way I want to play a game. And you know what? I say to all gamers out there, play any of the games you want to play any way you want to. If you want to cheat like a dog and you want to, and you're having fun doing so, go right ahead. Just as long as you're not doing it in like competitions. If you're not trying to cheat like online and stuff like that and doing some really bad shit online like people tend to do then i condemn you but if you're cheating in the first uh, one player game that's only um affecting you and stuff in your gamer score points and whatnot or whatever you're doing or playstation points or trophies or something hey go for it i don't care it's not like you're getting anything for them uh too much but hey have fun if you're having fun go do it that is my that is my uh little saying on the whole fact of mods and cheating and stuff. Like I said, if it doesn't affect other people, it's fine. I like to cheat in games, but I like to do it for my own enjoyment. I don't do it in not open multiplayer games. I don't do it where it affects other friends and people that might come over to play games with me. Not that it's been a while for that, but still, still, I keep it, I keep it real with the other people, with the homies, the gaming homies. And then for myself... Damn, I just want to have my own fun, and I make my own fun. But uh, like I said, been playing a bunch of Fallout 4, and that's pretty much going to be what this uh, upcoming Friday's game on is going to be, is probably me going back into the wasteland on my PC, playing some Fallout 4, having some Fallout 4 love. And they just apparently uh, updated it. I I don't know, do do I have that in... uh... Oh, uh, yeah, that's going to be coming up in the news. But uh, apparently they have updated it again. Fingers crossed. I know this happened like a little a, a little while ago, but fingers crossed that it fixes a lot of those other issues that we have, like uh, my screen uh, going all bonkers and stuff and not letting me capture with the other one and I got to play around with it. Hopefully that stuff gets fixed with uh, resolution and stuff like that. I'll have to try it out at and, and do that uh i've been playing a ton of army of rumor folks uh the, the vampire survivors uh equivalent uh is very fun it is a very good game i, I don't have vampire survivors on my list what because that was another game i played so i gotta put that on the list too i missed one game and i played a bunch of that too vampire survivors there we go 
I was playing that on PC. There we go. Hmm. I can't believe I missed. I left out Vampire Survivors because I also played that as well. But I'm um, talking about Army of Ruin first. So. so, like I said, Army of Ruin is like Vampire Survivors, but it looks a, l a lot more um, graphics wise better. You know, it's more 3D ish graphics. It's got more. Uh, flavors of gameplay and stuff and it has its own uh multiple enemy killing type of uh, game where you just use one joystick or controller or whatever depending on what you're playing with uh of course i'm playing on my series x and having a ball trying to beat challenges trying to do this and that and trying to kill the hordes and it gets pretty tough i think army of ruin it is a lot more difficult or gets a lot more difficult than vampire survivors vampire survivors you can get leveled up with your character to a point where you're like almost a god and you can get godlike with most of the characters in vampire survivors now army of ruin i did not unlock more any i didn't unlock too many more characters i think i unlocked just one character recently and i gotta figure out how to unlock more of them but in vampire survivors a lot of those characters you can use and you can get the more abilities with them throughout uh, the levels and stuff. And they become so powerful in Vampire Survivors that that the only thing that basically can kill your character in Vampire Survivors is death itself. Is that death guy is uh, death itself. And uh, in Army of Ruin, you can die easily multiple times, anytime. And that is a di the difference, the big difference between Army of Ruin and Vampire Survivors is the way the two games look, the way the two games act and feel, the way the environments are. Um, and like I said, the enemies are different in both of them, and they act differently, and they have different, uh, uh, what should I say, skill set slash uh, toughness to them. And that makes for both being great games and Having them both as really good games to play uh, in this uh, in this time frame of me playing these games. I'm thinking of another game, too. I, I don't know why. So, basically, I talked about two games that I played into one, both being Vampire Survivors and Iron Man Ruin. Vampire Survivors, I could just keep going and going and going until I get to the end of the level or until the... Death comes and tries to take me, take my life away, which I heard there is a way to kill death, to defeat death in Vampire Survivors. I have not figured it out or found out how. I should watch a YouTube video on that because that's got to be pretty epic in itself because death is pretty damn powerful in the game. Like, he'll come and rape your ass. He just comes down. All the other enemies go away. He just comes down and just rapes you in the back and you're done like no time and he, even though you can get revived multiple times in that game if you want to you just there still raping your ass when you wake up and it's just like oh my god he doesn't give you a second to move anywhere and it's like oh, how do i get out of this what do i do and what 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 can i do when death is trying to rape my ass in army of ruin you get a little bit of time sometimes you can get away from certain enemies and characters they're a little bit more slowish and sluggish and stuff especially the bosses in army of ruin they can get overwhelming when there's more characters on the screen but otherwise army of ruin um a lot of the bo characters bosses are so sluggish and stuff they can they can get a, a lot easier you know um in a way but then they can get challenging again um, and I know I'm not helping out my own, uh, cause of, uh, speaking about both the games. Cause I said originally Vampire Survivors is easy until you get to death and then Army of Ruin is hard, but yet you can defeat a lot of the characters in the bosses. If you just, you know, keep your, your distance or you, uh, keep track of all the enemies and where they are and how to defeat them. Like I said, they both, both games similar in a lot of ways. Uh, similar uh, gameplay styles in a lot of ways, you know, cut from similar similar evolved cloth, um, but they got their own unique experiences, and I love playing them both. Uh, they're both very fun games. Army of Ruin, 
uh so far i think it's on steam and series x i think it might be on playstation as well but uh i play it it might be on switch too i haven't checked that out but it's not on pc xbox because they have it on steam so uh i wish it was on pc xbox because i, I would have liked to get it on there instead but rb Rune is a hell of a game a very fun game and of course when i don't want to play any of that i go to vampire survivors and i'll spend long time just twiddle 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 watching twiddling like like i'm doing right here right now if you're not watching the video version of this podcast i'm just poking around going <laughs> kill 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 like the one day i was playing vampire survivors and i just my character was so powerful and i was like ready to get to bed i'm like okay i'll just let my character die so i just had my character just go just straight right uh, uh through the screen straight to the right on the screen i just held held the the bump uh the right the right uh, arrow just right and he kept going and kept going and kept going and all the enemies just kept dying and dying and dying and i'm like okay maybe one or two enemy two enemies might barely hit my my character and drop its health just a teeny weeny little bit and then his health regens because i have regeneration health on my character and I'm just like going for minutes and minutes and minutes. And it's like, oh God, I got to get to bed. And it's getting later and later. And the char- my character's still not dead yet. And I'm just mowing through these gourds of characters on the screen in Vampire Survivors. I'm like, oh my God. And this was like in the middle of the game. Because I'm like, oh, it's almost time for bed. I didn't look at the clock until a little later. But I wanted to finish up the level because I wanted to die to get the, the points and stuff. And I think... The only way you could uh, die and get the points is uh, if you die and get the points. But uh, I found out that you could quit it and still get points and stuff, I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you get less, but um, even when I was standing still, my character was still mowing through all the char- all the enemies around uh, her. I think it was a her character. And uh, I was like, what the freaking hell? Where's Def? Where's Def going to come to rape my ass? <laughs> but that would have been 20, 30, 20, 25 something minutes later after that when death would come around for that. So I had to quit the game because I was it was getting too late. I had to go to bed. But um, like I said, if you like those types of games, Army of Ruin, Vampire Survivors, amazing games on amazing platforms to play them on. Uh, on this was last week's. Uh, it was a let's play. I played more Fallout seventy six. Got a little bit more into it. I, I got into it a little bit more. I'm like, okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm actually getting a little bit better at it. I actually got some power armor that I stole from somebody. I guess I don't know how I got it. I think it was somebody else's, but I found some power armor. Nobody was in it. I took it. Had a full energy core to it. Put it away in my chest at my base and uh, did a few, uh, uh, another few missions and I was having a little bit of fun and I'm like, okay, okay. Um, maybe I was having a little bit more fun in Fallout 76 than I usually do, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to continue to play it. I know I said I might go back, get back to it once in a while, but I don't know. I think my time has passed with Fallout 6, especially when I got so many other games to play. Sure, this is an online game, but I'm only would be playing it myself, with myself. So it doesn't really uh, matter as much. And I already got Fallout 4, so I don't really need to go into the world of Fallout 76 yet. So I don't know if I'll continue to play it. I still have it installed on my PC, but I don't know if I'm going to continue um, with the game or not. It seems fun sometimes. Sometimes it just seems like it drags, but sometimes it seems fun. I haven't gotten into any to any real trouble or anything. I think I died once or twice in the game, but I was able to retrieve my items and stuff. But otherwise, I don't know. It's got its good points. It's got a lot of its bad points. And I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to continue with Fall 76. Like I said, I got Fallout 4. I got other Fallout games. I'm pretty much good in the Fallout category. Another game on my list of games, because I like to just go right through these uh, lists of games that I've been playing. Uh, Little Kitty Big City. 
on the Series X I've been playing it. And uh, originally I was streaming it, then I downloaded it for a minute and played it on my Series X, both the streaming and, uh, or should I say xCloud, both xCloud or just playing it, downloading and playing it are both really fun. If you want to just try out a game and you go to xCloud and you have good internet and stuff like I do, I got gigabit uh, Fios fiber internet um, in my house here. Uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, I have to admit, uh, xCloud got really good after a while. I haven't tried it out wirelessly because my computer is hardwired and my Xbox are hardwired to my network. I haven't tried it really with the Rog Ally. Maybe I'll try it with my, uh, a game with my Rog Ally today later to see how well xCloud works on a wireless device in my house it should work fine because i got you know like i said gigabit internet i got a mesh system in my house so i got internet draped everywhere in my house i mean everywhere um so i should be able to play any game really good really fine and the raw gala uses uh um 6g for wire wi-fi wi-fi 6g so it should work pretty damn well. That goes pretty damn fast, especially when I'm downloading games from like Xbox Game Pass and stuff, which usually take a, a fortnight to do on the PC, on my hardline PC. Doing it on um, a wireless connection seems to go a bit faster for some reason on my raw galley. I don't know. I don't know why, but it does. So it's been pretty interesting with that. Uh, but been playing a little bit of uh, Little Kitty Big City. I heard about it. It's not, technically, it's not really a game for me. It is a game for me, but it isn't right now because I already played a game like that called, um, uh, what was it called? Untitled Goose Game. That's what it reminds me of. Probably a bit more things you could do in this game. They give you a lot more little stupid tasks that you could do um, with uh, Little Kitty Big City, but it has the same untitled goose game vibes to it but better graphics and stuff like that and uh, uh more stuff to do in the in the game but I kind of fell off of it after a little while because a lot of stuff i just didn't understand what to do and whatnot but um it was fine for a bit just playing it out trying it out because sometimes you want to just try out some games for a bit i i played little kitty big city for a few hours it is a it's it is interesting in how to be a cat it actually has a really good um, kitty cat physics, I should say, for you being a kitty cat. And um, it's pretty interesting on how you, you as a kitty cat could do all this stuff. And it reminds me of when I used to have a lot, of, a couple cats of my own here in the house. I don't have any animals now, uh, temporarily. Eventually, I'm going to maybe get a dog next down the road. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I owned a lot of cats before. And uh, they would always get into a little bit of the trouble. They'd go and jump. Like, if I had a cat now, they would just love jumping on my desk here. They'd be walking all over this desk, knocking shit over with their paws and tails. I'm sure the pens that hang in the pen storage case over here would be yanked out, thrown out, knocked over. My bottles would be thrown over. They'd be stepping on my keyboard, screwing up the whole podcast and everything. And I'd be like, ah, no. Cause that's what little kitties do. They cause big trouble and <laughs> and stuff. But it's a fun game if you got like kids and stuff, or if you're just big cat fans and you wanted to try it out for a little bit. Why not? That's what Game Pass is for. That is that is the whole legacy around Game Pass. At least to most people and to me, uh, I believe Game Pass is the best place to try out games. Sure, you could play the whole games and beat them, and there you go. If you don't want to buy them, but it's great to try out games that you would normally never try because normally you'd have to purchase them full price and whatnot or wait for a really good sale and then go, eh, okay, this game ain't so good and I just wasted, what, five, six bucks. But being a Game Pass subscriber and being able to play games like Little Kitty Big City or Fallout 76, because originally I pre ordered Fallout 76, I, I think it was like over $100 for the collector's edition. And I'm like, eh, eh, eh. After playing the demo, I was like, eh, eh. Originally, I would never have played that game again if I, if I would have had to play uh, purchase it. But after Game Pass came to be, I'm like, oh, okay. Here we go. A game that I originally disliked very much 
get to try it on again after so many years of updates and titles and stuff. Oh, this game is okay now. It seems a little bit better, a bit better than it was before. And um, I learned some new stuff. I got to play some that game that I probably would have wrote off a long time ago into the sunset, like a lot of other people. Same thing with games like Little Kitty Big City and Little Kitty Big City having a lot of fun just being a little cat. Even if I, you just want to do it for a few hours or something and then you're like, okay, I'm done with it. I had my fun and um, I had my fun and I'm done with it. So, you know, I deleted it off my Xbox and I'm like, okay, I had my fun. I'm good. I'm good. It's not for me. I would have purchased that game to begin with. So there you go. And that's something that Game Pass allows uh, someone like me and you to do. And uh, it's worth my subscription fee to do that. That's why I say with for Microsoft and Xbox, if they do, which behind the scenes I keep hearing rumors that they are looking into, and I don't have this in the news at all section, but they are looking into maybe revamping their Game Pass subscription models and stuff a bit. Hopefully they don't add another stupid tier or something because that would just ruin the whole their whole uh, subscription service for Game Pass. But if they just revamped it a little bit, if they made Game Pass Ultimate a little bit more expensive, like what is it now, fifteen bucks, sixteen bucks? I I don't know. I have to pay tax. I have to pay the New York State sales tax because you know New York State sucks and everything. So it's a little bit more expensive for me. But I think what is it, fourteen ninety nine? If it was like nineteen ninety nine, twenty bucks a month, to me, Game Pass is, would still be worth it. At least all the way up to twenty bucks. If it would be anywhere beyond twenty bucks. It would depend on what games and what Game Pass would be offering me for my monthly uh, subscription price. Otherwise, uh, I would be willing, and I say this, and I know a lot of people might disagree with me. There's a lot of people that say, oh, Game Pass has no games. I hear a lot of podcasters say, oh, Game Pass has been really dead with games lately, and there's no games. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I look into Game Pass like every week. And I just find a ton of games. I'm like, ooh, this would be good to play. Oh, I remember playing that, but I want to play that again. Oh, I want to play that one or that one. And I'm like, I don't know what to choose. Do I have time to play this? My problem is there's so many games on Game Pass, I don't have enough time to play all of them. And depending on how long they all last, it's like pick or choose which games you want to play. But um, for me, Game Pass is worth it probably if they go up to like 19.99 for Game Pass Ultimate and they did something like 15 bucks for the middle one and then whatever for the core version of Game Pass but please Microsoft slash Xbox do not make it more complicated don't complicate it don't complicate Game Pass cuz that will just make it worse for you guys and you guys are already in the toilets from uh, your your shenanigans from not too long ago and you had a lot of shenanigans going on throughout the weeks um, and months, I should say. So you guys should not be uh, fucking up anything more unless if you want to lose more loyal gamers on your side. So you guys got to be really careful on how they do things over there. And if they, anybody at Microsoft is listening to this, especially in the Xbox division, pass this up the chain. This is from me, Mr. Mike, and the Gamer Squad out there saying, hey, don't fuck up Game Pass too much. Don't fuck it up. You can raise prices a little bit, but uh, make sure you're uh, decently, uh, you know, providing the content and stuff. I know you guys aren't providing the games on your side, but otherwise you're providing games from other people. Just just make sure you get a good helping and you don't make it too expensive and you don't split it off six ways to Sunday on that because that would suck. And then people like me would just get off of it. Uh. Like I said, not too much more to talk about Little Kitty Big C. Like I said, basically untitled Goose Game, but better graphics in a way. Still weird shit going on in there, but same concept. And that's that's how I'm going to speak of that. Uh, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Yes, I, I played more of that. I played more of Don Doku Island, which I finally got that island to five stars. And after I got my island of Don Doku Island to five stars, you know what I did? I deleted the game. I turned off Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and I said, okay, I'm done with you. Bye-bye. I got my Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth game 
playthrough gameplay uh, very well. I think I played over what was it? A hundred and something hours. Hold on. I can maybe check this out here if I don't screw anything up. I'm loading up my Xbox account here. Let us see. Let's go into my library. Let's see if it has, it should have it on my library, even though I don't have it installed. How many hours? I, I, I got 61% of the achievements of it, so that's awesome. I play, That's why you know I played a lot of it. I played almost 200 hours of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, people. Almost 200 hours. I played 183.2 hours of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Got 734 gamer points of the 1,200. And the reason probably also was I could have probably got a bunch more achievements in this game if I would have did some extra side stuff and if I would have purchased that uh, DLC that they wanted uh, people to buy where you could play that extra content and get into that uh, uh, whatchamacallit mode. Uh, what's that mode called? Uh, is it Game Plus mode? I think it might be Gamer Plus mode. But I decided against it, so I didn't do that. Um, so that's probably why I'm not getting that extra 200 Chivos. Yes, I know Xbox just got updated because it asked me, oh, you got an Xbox update, Mr. Mike. Uh, anywho, yeah, played it. I love that game. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Oh, Monte Bente. It was worth every little penny that I paid for because I had a $50 xbox gift card that i earned from my reward points that i put towards that game and guess what i almost got another 50 dollars xbox rewards point card uh coming to me i'm just gonna keep racking up the points even though it's a little harder to rack up the points i'm gonna just keep racking them up and then um when there's another game for me to want to go out and get um in the near future um and they sell it on xbox uh you know, on Game Pass, on PC Game Pass or something, or Xbox game, mostly it would be P I would want it for PC Game Pass, cause the, or PC Game Pass, or PC Xbox Store, I should say, so I could play on my raw gallery or my PC. Those will be the games I use that for. For games like that are only offered through the Xbox Store, I will still, you know, I'll buy them digitally, but, you know, I'll probably buy them fully or I'll wait for sales or something. And that's like stuff like the upcoming um, the upcoming uh, Assassin's Creed game that looks really cool where you could be a samurai. Yeah, that looks cool. i seen a little bit of that. I want to see more of that shit uh, where it could be a, a samurai. And what was it? A, a samurai and a, a ninja and a samurai? Or was it something else? Samurai or something? I, I, I completely forgot. But you could play as swordsman characters in a new assassin's creed game and that really tickles my fancy and yeah give me that give me that shit i will take that shit uh but um back to like a dragon infant wealth there's gonna be more um news on um uh, upcoming like rumored well not rumor news but there's going to be some Sega announcements on what they would like to do with the like a dragon series and other series going forward That'll be the news section, but yeah, I think I got my my way more of my money's worth with like a dragon for wealth. I love the Yakuza games to death. I gotta, I'm gonna get back into playing more of them on my raw galley after I play a bunch of Fallout Four and some other games I want to get done with. I'm gonna get back into my uh, backlog of uh, other other Yakuza games that I got on my Rogue Ally and stuff like that. Other uh, games that I played on them all already, but I want to replay them all again. So that's going to be definitely some fun for me uh, playing those games, but definitely a fun game. But finally, it was time to sunset uh, Lego Dragon Infinite Wealth. Deleted off my Rogue Ally and a ton of space just came onto it. Mm-hmm. Uh, another game I've been trying to play, but then I, I just got burned out of, and I still got to delete it because I'm going to delete this game because this game is no fun. It puts me to semi-sleep. Well, this one doesn't, but it kind of puts me to sleep. This ne The next game will put me to sleep, but, uh, Hellblade, the first Hellblade, Suna Saga. Ugh. I tried. At first, I, I thought I liked it. Then when I got more into the original Hellblade... And playing on my rug, I, I noticed it got more tedious. It got more, eh. 
And then I'm just like, okay, I, I really can't ha- take this game. It's not that the game is too uh, graphics intense or something for me or, you know, violence or craziness or something. No, nah, no, it's not that. It's just the story is so boring. And the gameplay is so boring. And you're just walking and looking for little symbols in the sky. Like I got on my video podcast here where you see the little symbols and stuff. You got to try to put them together to open a door and open another door. And then when you go through that second door, the first door, wherever door, and then you go to a guy where you battle a guy with a sword really badly. And then you either win or lose. And then you move on. And then people talk to you around you. You're in your head. You got these voices in your head, just like Randy Orton. I hear voices in my head. I don't know, understand what they mean. They speak to me. You know, <laughs> that would be the Randy Orton theme song if you're a wrestling fan or even not, or if you're a past wrestling fan. It's a good song. It's called Voices. It's the Randy Orton theme song. Maybe you want to look that up on YouTube. L- listen to that theme song because that's what that's what should be. That song should be in the Hellblade games. They should have that where it goes and does that. Oh, can I bring that up? I know that's not something you really want to. And I know YouTube would uh, definitely screw me over on this because I, I know it'll have a copyright thing on it. Uh, let's see here. But I'm going to try it anyways. Because I'm doing gaming news here. And this is part of the gaming news. So uh, voices. Um. Randy Orton theme song. There we go. I'm only going to play a little bit of this because I know it'll go. Here we go. I have voices in my head. They count to me. They understand. They talk to me. Now imagine that song in Hellblade. Okay, I bet you I can't go any more than that, but you understand the jest, and oh boy, I turned something off. What did I turn off here? <laughs> I accidentally clicked on too many things. Hold on. Uh, but yeah, that song, even though it's not made for... Uh, it's not made for... Mm, where was it? It was the... Oh, recent clothes that could go there. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. Bring back my Nintendo... There we go. Okay, there was a Nintendo story I wanted to do. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that, folks. Little little glitch there of me clicky clicky too fasty. Um, but yeah, that that would be even though that's not really made for that kind of type of game. But they could have had it in the credits, or they could have had it a little bit in the beginning, or just had it for the, the ending credits. I don't know what they do, but they talk to me. That would be perfect for. Uh, Sonya Saga or Sonya's uh, like theme music for the end of the game Hellblade or Hellblade 2 um, but like I said the, the Hellblade not really a good game didn't really care for it I tried playing more of it I, I did get some more you know way through and stuff but I'm just deleting off my ROG LA. it plays well it looks great it plays well on my ROG LA. I just did not like the gameplay same thing with Hellblade 2 that just came out. You can, and you'll be able to watch that right now on my uh, website at oldfreakygamer.com or youtube.com slash oldfreakygamer where I do a uh, first gameplay mostly. I, I'm 20 minutes in to the game, so that type of first gameplay. So even 20 minutes in, I was re- ready falling asleep. I was bored to shit. Hellblade 2 looks amazing. It looks very good, even though it has some uh, screen tearing issues, even though it has V-Sync and all that shit. It still seems like it has uh, screen tearing issues. I don't know why. I, I think they got to fix some of that shit. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. But otherwise, it, it looked great. It, it It is a boring game. It's boring as shit. It's more of the original Hellblade. I thought it would be a bit different. I thought they were talking about... Hellblade 2 being 
more different than the first Hellblade, especially with sword fighting and stuff. And sure enough, no, no, no. <laughs> that was a slogfest. Now, Ninja Theory, they make beautiful games. But do they make good games? No. They don't really make even games. This is more of a theatrical experience, showing what the technology could do. And my impression of Hellblade 2, and I might as well talk about this now because it's a game that I have played, and um, it seems like they're just trying to show what they could do with their graphics capabilities over there at that studio and what, how many pixels they could push, how, how weird and shit they can make the, uh, uh, like a title that doesn't make no sense. And I said this before. I said this on my stream last um, last last night when because I'm recording this on Saturday. This podcast on my stream on my game on stream last night. Uh, I'm playing Fortune Street. I stated that this game, or I was, I might have also stated this on my uh, first gameplay of uh, Hellblade Two as well because I came to the conclusion Ninja Theory, that studio, even though it's being kept open, which that's a big surprise to me and probably other people, and that they're getting, and this is going to be in the news too, that they're going to be allowed, that they got like another game approved to start making and that they got other games that they might have approved to be start making, even though Microsoft and Bethesda shut down other studios and let other people go, but Ninja Theory not making games that make money or anything is getting more games and stuff to be made mm-hmm and the next one's gonna be a psychological thriller game to me it sounds like ninja theory should uh, or microsoft should uh maybe put ninja theory or maybe try to sell ninja theory not close them down but maybe just sell them i wonder if kojima's looking for more crazy people to make games with because the Ninja Theory team and studio would be perfect for Kojima Productions. If those two teams came together, Kojima and I'm sure he, I'm sure he's played Hellblade or Hellblade 2. If he didn't play Hellblade, he's playing Hellblade 2. He's probably looking at him going, "Oh, this shit is crazy. This looks like like my games a little bit like that um oh, what was that recent one? Oh, shoot. <laughs> you see, even his games uh, pass me by. All I know of him is the Metal Gear Solid guy, but that uh, that walking simulator guy, that package delivery walking uh, heavy. Is it heavy? Oh, what is it? Oh, I gotta look it up. <sighs> Hold on. I'm gonna just speak this. Hido Kojima Games. No, that totally fucked up. <laughs> um. Let's see. Kojima Games. Oops. I've just put it there. Maybe it'll show up. Uh, uh, how come they're not showing anything else? They're not showing the recent game. Here, give me a second here. Okay. The game was that I finally f figured out when I paused my recording... Death Stranding. Yes. Wow. I can't believe I forgot about that. Oh, actually, I can because I don't really care for Kojima's games either. That, like, none of them. I even played a little bit of Death Stranding. It looked interesting. It looked weird. It just was not my type of game. That's what Hellblade is and Hellblade 2. They are a perfect team in a company for Kojima to take over under his wing or be working together on any games. I don't know why Microsoft doesn't, doesn't the people at Xbox and Microsoft should go, hey, Kojima, two things. Do you, could you use another studio under your umbrella? Do, do, would you be interested in purchasing a studio, maybe? Or would you want to work with one of our studios that makes games like you do? Because Hellblade and Hellblade 2 are definitely Kojima-like games. And Kojima... Likes to make his games like that with story cinematics, 
characters walking very slowly, all crazy like, and gameplay that's just unattainable to people like me. <laughs> and the stories that don't make one lick of sense. That would be Hellblade and Hellblade 2. And that would be Kojima's games. That's where they should do. They should work with Kojima. Because that's those are his right up his alley. And I wonder if I was able to speak with the guy, I'd be like, hey, Kojima, you play the Hellblade series, play any of the Hellblade, Hellblade 2, they'd be right up your freaking crazy alley because you make shit like that. You should work with them. You should talk to Microsoft and Xbox and say, hey, can I take them over? Can we work together or something? Because that would be a match made in heaven, I bet. They both love technology. They both love to make story cinematics. They both like to make the craziest of shit. That would work. But as me as a gamer, I tried Hellblade 2. I'm I still haven't installed my PC, folks. I'll play I'm gonna play a little bit more of Hellblade 2 and see how far I could get into it before I just go insane of boredom or falling asleep. Maybe I'll play it at tomorrow night. Sunday tomorrow because I, I do work Monday even though it's Memorial Day as you're listening to this I work in the mor- morning and Memorial Day because I work where something's open I'm going to go play this probably Sunday afternoon night before I want to go to bed that game will help me fall asleep that game will get me ready to go to bed that's how bad Hellblade 2 is to me now like I said there could be, there's probably some of you that think these Hellblade games are amazing. And I got to say, like I said, they're amazing with their technical achievements, their looks, the way the environments are made and stuff and some of the stuff. But otherwise, as games and a lot of other uh, game journalists and people that speak on podcasts said this already, they're not, they're not games. They're not really good games. They're really bad. And, uh, I thought Hellblade 2 was supposed to be a bit different, but I guess I was wrong. And, uh, like I said, Hellblade 2 put me to sleep. When I first played the first 20 minutes of it, because the reason why I played the first 20 minutes of it, because I watched the first 20 minutes of it before, and I think I was falling asleep too when I was watching, because it was out everywhere. And then I played the first 20 minutes because I wanted to play the second uh, another big chunk of the game after because I'm like, well, if everybody saw the first 20 minutes of the game from everybody else already, maybe I'll do a first gameplay and I'll start from after that first 20 minutes. So that that's what my thinking was. And I'm like, well, maybe the game will get a little bit better or different or something after that. And I'm like, no, no, I'm still walking, still talking, still looking like a disaster. Still getting my ass beat by guys because this lady, she lets herself be tormented and abused by other people and stuff. And she thinks down of herself and all that. She's supposed to be some leader, but she's got psychiatric problems, which I guess it runs in the family. Uh, I guess her mom had it or something too, I guess. I don't know. But she hears voices in her head. And it's like, okay, I'll try to play this. And then I, I was falling asleep again. When I was trying to do that video for you, get for uh, everybody, and I'm like, wow. There were some little g- interesting things, but after that, it was just like, nighty night, nighty night, nothing is exciting. This is really boring. What a big open space and world where you got to find these puzzle, puzzle glowing things and stuff, and you got to align them up in the, from all point er, p- parts of these. Uh, village and area and stuff and that's basically a waste of <coughs> a waste of space you made this this town and you can't do nothing in it you're not fighting anybody really i fought this one dude which apparently he was so overpowered he was just like bitch slapping sonya over and over again beating her down slicing her i'm like how does she even survive and i'll cut his larynx i'll cut his sides i'll hit him in the thing and he wasn't going down until get to the cinematics where you actually hit him in the leg with a axe or something and he goes down he's like ah i fall down like a tree because you hit me with the axe in my leg 
That's the only thing that takes him down. Even though you slash him in the neck, the chest, the head, even though his head's supposed to probably come off when you slash him with a super sharp sword to his head, you would think his head would come off. No, no. You don't even see any. You see a little bit of blood, and that's it. He keeps going. Keeps going. <laughs> it's a ridiculous game. And uh, like I said, I'm sure there's people that like it. I'm not one of those people. Sorry. Um, Hellblade 2. Woo. Gameplay-wise, stinker. Visuals and uh, concept of everything else of the game, except for story, amazing. It looks great. Looks looks amazing. Doesn't play very good, but it looks amazing. I got to give him that. That's all I'm going to give him. Onward to another game I've been trying to play and trying to beat, but I, I, I kind of hit myself in a weird, um, weird roadblock. Evil West. Yes, it is a really good game. It's vampires in the Evil West times, and you're fighting these vampires and creatures and... You're doing these boss battles, mini boss battles, bigger boss battles. I keep forgetting how the, the controls go all the time. That's always a problem. Um, been playing on my raw galley, been having fun up to a point. And then it seems like after it's it gets to a point where it's getting a little more heavy handed and a little bit harder. It seems like I might have to switch this game up a bit and play the rest of it on the PC because it's not that the Rogue Alley can't handle it or I can't play it on the Rogue Alley anymore. I think it would be easier if I just used a regular Xbox controller and a bigger screen to be able to see um, what to do with the enemies because it seems like I'm having a bit of trouble um, focusing in that game on the Rogue Alley. And it's not the Rogue Alley's fault. It's my fault. It's totally my eyes and stuff like that. And I I get to these points in Evil West now where it's I'm dying comp, comp, over and over again. Things are getting really challenging, and I just I, I I figure out like I can't figure out how to get things certain things done, and they they don't really point it out to you in the game, and it gets me really aggravated. And I feel like I want to smack my raw galley on my knee or throw it or something and that's not something i want to do because that's over a th for my raw galley anyways it's that's expensive device way expensive device and i figure if i play it on my pc and finish it up the only thing that could get broken or thrown or broken is my control <laughs> my gaming controller which i got more of I got more. I actually found another brand new Xbox Series controller in box when I was uh, changing out my office from my old office desk and stuff to my new one. And I'm like, oh my God, look, another Series X controller. Holy shit. So I got more Series X controllers than I could do with, deal with. So my thing is, I'll play the rest of this game on my PC so I don't have to throw my rug alley across the way. Because I, I get in those moments. I'm a very piss poor gamer sometimes when it comes to very um very very intense situations like evil west can do to me and when i get super aggravated sometimes i'm just like ah, i just want to throw this control and i shake it a little bit i'm like oh oh, oh no 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 and i and i I'll, I'll realize it right away i'm like oh don't this is the wrong ally it's got a screen built in it's got all this stuff you don't want to shake this puppy this is expensive this ain't just a controller mr mike you got to calm down so I always do, but then I get frustrated. I'm like, ah, I can't beat this game. And I figure maybe with a bigger screen and just a smaller controller, maybe I'll try to finish up Evil West because I really want to finish up Evil West. It is still a fun game. Um, it's like a Gears-like game in the Evil West with vampires, and uh, I just want to finish that game. I want to finish it, say I played and beat Evil West before it gets out of the Xbox uh, Game Pass store, which I'm sure it's still going to be in there for a while, but still, I want to beat it. Say I beat it, but um, I'm thinking I'm going to switch that up, off from the Rogue Alley to the PC because because uh, it's me. And yes, if anybody's going to mention anything in the comments, yes, sometimes I'm a piss poor gamer that can't play. I'm actually playing this game on story mode. Evil West, there's, there's harder difficulties. I'm just playing on story mode because that's what I like to do. Some people like more of a challenge. I like the story mode because that's what I want to know is the story. 
And sometimes it still kicks my butt. That might be just because of the age. Fingertips, fingers. Can you hear that? Does that come through on the microphone? I got to listen to that when I get done with this podcast. If I, you could hear my fingers are cracking. That's old fingers and hands. These hands and fingers get used a lot daily, every day. With projects, working on stuff, workouts, beating on stuff, playing video games, you name it. These hands are always moving. And they're just getting older and used up and they're getting stiffer. And uh, no matter how many stretches I do with my fingertips and stuff, no matter how much, uh, you know, I try to do certain tasks to my hands to keep them good, they're not as quick as they used to be. When I was younger, I could play online and do a whole bunch of stuff. Now it's like tick, tick, duck, tick, 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 duck, tick, duck, tick, 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 oh, oh, finger broken. Got to fix that finger. Otherwise, I can handle games still very well. <laughs> Hopefully there won't be a point where I just can't play a game anymore. That would suck really bad. But I got to keep the old freaky gamer uh, name alive by going, hey, I'm going to continue on, folks, and <laughs> playing the games. So, yep, been playing Evil West on and off. I am going to finish that off on PC because that seems like a great way to finish that game. Uh, been doing some more xCloud and stuff via my Series X, uh, got into, after, after all these studios got closed down, especially, um, Tango Gameworks and stuff, I wanted to try out one of their other games, like Ghostwire Tokyo, see how that is. It is a pretty dull game. Um, it's very generic and basic. It reminds me a lot like The Darkness. Even though you don't got those tentacle things coming out of you and around you, it reminded me as the darkness with superpowers, with uh, magical, wizardy superpowers. Um, yeah. I... Um, the graphics, of course, are are good, are great. Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, like I said, the gameplay is very generic. Uh, very generic. And you do these, like, weird things. You do, like, um, oh, what's his name? Not Mr. Fantastic. Uh, Doctor Strange does. He does those. They do those movements where they're like, open up a portal. Go push something at somebody. Do something. You know, that's what Mr. <coughs> Dr. Strange and the crew would do. That's what you're basically doing in Ghostwire Tokyo. You're doing Dr. Strange techniques, and you're all you're doing is blasting these headless uh, schoolgirls and characters and stuff. A lot of schoolgirls. A lot of, lot of schoolgirls because you're in Tokyo, Japan. And I, apparently you're going to try to get your brother out of the the cloud hospital or something he's like he got taken from the hospital by this uh dark side of the other side or something and he's i guess they this this thing took him into another dimension or something i don't know what it is i don't i don't don't understand it's something happened where something happened and all the ghosts and everybody turned into ghosts or something you're the only character that's still like around that could go through this through Japan, walk through it and do your stuff. Even though you got this other character like inside of you and you got like part of your face has this like black shit all over it. It's like this static black um, dimensional ooze on your face. And it, I guess that's from the other character dude or whatever. It keeps you from turning into a ghost yourself, I guess. I don't know. I don't know much about it. I'm just guessing on what it all is. But all I've been into was the hospital and some stuff and pew, pew, pew here and pew, pew, pew there and picking up little lunch sacks, bags and stuff to get some extra health for whatever. And it's just been really dull and boring. But I wanted to, like I said, I just picked it up just to give it a try because it doesn't hurt to give, you know, games a try. And I'm like, 
well, now that Tango Gameworks is down and out and shut down, I'm like, I wanted to try them out. I wanted to try out one of their other games, and I tried it out, and I'm like, I, I can understand why people didn't like this. Mm -hmm. But it was good that I could try it. Another reason why Game Pass is amazing and playing on xCloud is great too because uh, you don't have to install the game and stuff. It plays it on their servers, and you get to try out a game that nonetheless that you probably would never have tried out if you had to buy it, paid money for it. Simple as that. Um, I don't have any more things to say about Ghostwire Tokyo except for I'm probably not going to play, ever play that game again. A lot of games on my list here that I'm never going to play again. A lot of the games are just going in the, the gamer gamer dust pile. The gamer the gamer uh, hole of nothing. Uh, the final game on this list, because I already talked about Vampire Survivors, a great game. A really fun game. I saw a Jeff Gerstmann play this game on his uh, video when he does some interesting videos on YouTube sometimes. Mostly he likes to play his NES games and stuff like that and his retro stuff. And I, I try to, I kind of get little, eh, okay, whatever. I go, I, I usually lean away from his videos now because he's just all into the retro scene right now. And he, he doesn't really play too many of the modern day games too much. He might play them at launch. Like he'll probably play the next Call of Duty and stuff. But he doesn't really play too many of the other modern day games and post them on YouTube or anything anymore. So I, I kind of watch other people like uh, Next Lander and Giant Bomb and stuff like that on YouTube to get my gaming sessions on. But uh, he played this game, which I was surprised. And this was on Steam. This is a Steam game. And it's really fucked up. It is really cool. It is really a good top-down crazy shooter. Like something cl close to like a Vampire Survivors or something-esque type of game. But... It, uh, it's something like you would say, hey, see, like Halo Wars or something like that, or just shooting around. You could play as these characters. You start off as like a, a crazy bad Santa type, and you're shooting and you're killing people and babies and blowing up cars, stealing cars, stuff like that. It's like Grand Theft Auto, but yet you're just doing Rampage mode in Grand Theft Auto in this game. And I, you start off like as crazy Santa, and you're shooting up everything, and all the cops come, and you kill the cops, and blow up their cars and then the helicopters come and eventually tanks come and you know you keep getting wanted levels up and up and the whole concept is to survive your rampage and to just keep going and going and going as long as you can um in the rampage mode i forgot if there's a timer that counts down or not but it's called maniac because you're a maniac you're shooting up everything blowing up everything and the times that we're living in this is probably really frowned upon of a game as of a game because a lot of people don't like the shitty shitty bang bang kind of things going on nowadays but this game is hella fun it's only like 4.99 five dollars on steam right now and it's got really interesting graphics it's it plays very nicely uh, you could get little upgrades and collectibles and stuff, and you could keep doing runs and stuff. I want to get the crazy. I want to try to get that crazy clown next, and some other characters because there's other characters as well. Crazy clown is pretty cool, but um, it's a game I bought for five bucks because I know I'm gonna play that uh, a bit more, and I can play on my Rogue Ally, I can play on my desktop PC. I'm surprised this game didn't come out like on Xbox or something. Maybe because it was easier for them to port it to state, put it on Steam first, and then maybe it'll go on Xbox or anything else. I don't know. It is a very violent game, but you got Grand Theft Auto and everything else out there, and they got Rampage Mode and all that, so why not? Um, but those were all the games that I played in the past week, so I, I, I had a good amount of games that I went through to play uh, throughout the weeks so far, but uh, um, that's it for those. Uh, let's see here. My final thoughts. I put this in the rundown here. My final thoughts on Xbox's, a.k.a. Microsoft's eternal, ex eternal Studios banishment from its kingdom, meaning Arcane and uh, Tango Gameworks and uh, that was it Road Dog, something Dog Studios. Wasn't there a fourth one? Or was that? No, that fourth one was was melted into another studio, but basically Arcane and Tango Gameworks being 
ousted, shut down, which is still for Tangle, at least for me, for Tangle Gameworks, when they made um when they made uh man, my brain goes the shits when I wanna say something. When they made that uh the or uh, that, that, I can't speak. Hi Fi Rush. I thought they did something really good. Everybody else thought they did something really good. Even the executives at Microsoft thought they did something good and Xbox and all that. And then Bethesda chose them because apparently this was a Bethesda. It was an Xbox thing coming up from on high. But as we also learned, this was a Bethesda Studios decision as well because they wanted to close some studios over at Bethesda because Bethesda is getting, I guess, that division of Xbox in the Bethesda land was getting a little too spread out. So they wanted Bethesda to rein in some of their studios and projects and stuff. So they decided, well, we'll shut down. We'll merge this one studio with this other studio and we'll shut down these other studios. And of course they chose Tango Gameworks and Arcane. And I'm thinking, well, why'd you choose Tango Gameworks when they, even though, um, there are other games like Ghostwire Tokyo and uh, what was the other games they made? I forgot those other games. But the other games they made weren't so so big or hot, but they made Hi-Fi Rush, and that was a blockbuster success. They even put it on pl- PlayStation as one of those games they ported to PC, right? They ported that p- to PC, right? I'm not just thinking that, right? Or didn't they? I got to check my own facts here, folks. Let's see here. I fire rush on PlayStation. Yeah, I fire rush on PlayStation. Okay. Yeah, it's on PlayStation. It's 30 bucks on PlayStation. Um it's got 4.85 so almost 5 stars. So yes, Hi-Fi Rush did get put on PlayStation. It did very well. It's making some money. And, or you would think it's making some money. And they were thinking of maybe making a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush. And then it's just like, plug, boop, unplugged. So basically they got that whole thing. Their whole future games just got, boop, unplugged. So my thing is, well, if they weren't going to give them another chance, you'd think that they would at least took some of the people that made like the Hi-Fi Rush team. I don't know if it was all of Tangle Gameworks that did that. Might have been. I think they would have might have either kept Tangle Gameworks at least one for one more title and tried to let them make Hi-Fi Rush 2 or maybe got some of those people to go to another studio within Bethesda or elsewhere in Xbox to help make some, you know, make Hi-Fi Rush 2 or not help make other games. I don't know. I still don't. I understand and I don't understand. I know it's all about the money and shareholders and how, how much studios cost to keep around because, you know, games cost a lot to make. The cost of studios to keep around is a lot of money. Um, but the whole fact of the matter is Hellblade 2 just came out from Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory didn't have any big successes. They have creative games and, but they never had any, they never made any money. And I heard in the past before Ninja Theory got purchased by Microsoft that they were actually in, in the bankruptcy stage where they were owing like Sony tons of money and stuff. And they had to give up some of their technologies to Sony to pay to pay for the money they lost in games prior to that. And then after um, the first Hellblade, Microsoft picked them up as they were making Hellblade 2. And it's like, they didn't make any successful games. And Hellblade 2, even though it's like a successfully made game, it is a bore of a game. But yet Microsoft just let them greenlight another game or maybe two more games. We don't know about if the other game has been greenlit as well, but how much how many of these games does Microsoft think that Ninja Theory is going to be able to make and put out there as real games that make real money? If that's what 
the whole Xbox Microsoft initiative is going forward that all these games got to make big money successes or what I am thinking and other people are thinking are going bye bye you're out of here because like I said Microsoft is a toxic culture I thought that culture stayed over on the more of the Microsoft side and not bled into the Xbox side too much but because they're falling on hard times on the gaming side which everybody is even Sony and PlayStation I'm guessing that that means all bets are off, especially when you also hear that Microsoft might port more games to the PlayStation and everything else to make more money. And, you know, that's understandable, but make sure you have your focus on Xbox gamers and Xbox PC gamers. I should say Xbox gamers, Xbox PC gamers first. And then port to PlayStation and other things second, you know, like Sony does sometimes, even though Sony doesn't bring games, their games to the Xbox side. But I don't know. I don't know. I still have, especially when Microsoft wanted to do right by Japan, Japan and stuff, and they wanted to have a Japanese studio or something. Tango Gameworks was a Japanese studio. And they just flushed it down the toilet. That means they flushed down a lot of goodwill that could have been that Tango Gameworks from Japan could have been for if they wanted to purchase another studio down the road like a Sega or something else, Capcom or some other studio, maybe Square Enix because they're basically in financial troubles, which they're eagerly trying to maybe make their next games going forward going to not just playstation exclusively anymore but to other things like pc xbox switch whatever cloud other cloud services because they know they're not making the money they used to for just getting paid by sony directly to make games for them and they're gonna make games for broader go broader with their games which they should and uh we're gonna pause for a second here so let's see here. Now I'm back again for because I had a little thing to do, from uh, so I had to pause the podcast, which is another good reason why I don't do these podcasts live because there's always a lot of interruptions and a lot of things that go happen. But uh, all in all, I don't really have anything more to say. Like I said, it was it's it was such a disservice to gamers everywhere what Microsoft and Xbox did. Uh, for the state of the games industry even though sony has been closing their own studios other people been closing studios all around i think it hurt people more because with microsoft and xbox because it seemed like and it's or it should seem like they got tons of money they have that extra i thought they had that extra patience and they were willing to let a lot of other people falter and fail then they would rise up and all their studios would start putting out better games. Things would get better and they would figure things out everywhere and that all these studios would get a few more chances to show what they could really do and make some really good games and big hits and blockbusters. And the games industry as a whole would be a lot better because they'd be like, look, see what Microsoft and Xbox is doing. They're doing something right instead of, Oh, it's all about the bottom line. Everything's going down the toilet. You don't get a certain amount of hits or you're not making a certain amount of money for your game. That's going, that studio and all those employees are going down the corporate drain. But here's the thing. The games industry, and I have to say this sadly to everybody, if you like it or not, if you believe it or not, the games industry today is not like the games industry of yesteryear. Sure, it was about profit before, but now, now dreams are being crushed, killed, destroyed. It's all about the business. It's all about the bottom line. It's all about business. It's not about, let's make things fun. Let's be super creative. No, it's about what games will make money and what games are not going to make money and if those games don't make an, enough money to to actually justify themselves or that then it's bye bye pink slip bye bye in a in a time when 
companies are saying, oh, we need to get more games out or we don't have enough games like Microsoft still having problems getting all these games out. What's with all these studios and still not a lot of games coming out of these studios right away. Will Fable start come out this year? Will uh, that rumored Gears of War come out this year? Or hopefully it's a Gears of War collection first. They can push off another Gears of War for a little bit longer and for another year or so. Just bring out the Gears of, oh, Gears of War collection, a remaster collection or something. I would I would definitely get that and play that on my Rogue Ally and stuff, get new achievements, whatnot. Um, have a whole bunch of those games and stuff and play online with uh, Gears of War Judgment. I know the one that most people don't like. But, you know, there's tons of stuff. There's Fable, there's Gears of War uh, stuff. Halo's been in the tubes. Halo sucks. That last Halo sucks. I got to get back to trying to play it because I, I played mostly every Halo. I haven't played Halo Infinite because it sucked right off the bat for me because of the platforming and shit, but I really should just try to get back into that and try to force myself to play it, beat it, say I played it and beat it, but I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Otherwise, you hear about other studios, like I hear there might be, uh, uh, what was it? <clears throat> Another, oh yeah, the Doom game. We'll talk about that in the news. Was there another Wolfenstein maybe in the works too? I don't know. Maybe another Forza Horizon game. Because that Forza game, most people didn't like. I think it's pretty good. But a lot of people didn't like that Forza Motorsport for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's okay. I haven't played it in a while, but I think it's okay. It looks great. It plays decently on my ROG Ally. So if it plays decently on my ROG Ally... It's good enough for me. I, I don't know. Some of the tracks are too windy, but that's about all I can complain about. But I can play it better on my Rog Alley than the PC or an Xbox for some reason. So I don't know. I can turn those uh, turn the corners on those tracks in my Rog Alley a lot better than the PC and the Xbox. So you tell me uh, on that one. But uh, yeah, Microsoft, Xbox, they got to do better. That's my ending comments. Like I heard a lot of stuff, talk, a lot of talk from them. Uh, we got some talk here. Uh, let's see here. Is it from here or from here? Ah, from here. So, yeah, they got some people like execs. I might as well talk about this now. I know this is in the news section. I should have kept it out of the news section. But you got some execs, like Xbox execs uh, provides reasoning behind Bethesda studio closures. You got, what, is this Ted Booney or something? Or uh, what's his name? Matt Booty. He addressed employees about the closure, the closures, saying the changes are grounded in prioritizing high impact titles, which means AAA major seller titles you're talking about, instead of just making good games all around. Is that what they're trying to talk about? They're talking about profitable games. Even though making AAA games costs more money and takes more time. They're talking about profitable, profitability, long-term profitability. But you can make little games too, and they could be very profitable. They could be cheaper to make, very profitable to uh, make and stuff. Uh, they're talking about Bethesda's portfolio of blockbuster games and beloved worlds, hinting at basically Microsoft wants to focus on bigger releases and stronger IP over at Bethesda. So nothing little, nothing creative, nothing new, like Hi-Fi Rush. That's not a big release, and that's not a stronger IP. So it's not in that. It doesn't belong in their portfolio. But here's the thing. There's Matt Booney, everybody at Bethesda. There's a lot of bad management stuff at Bethesda. Softworks or game studios, I should say, right now still. Uh, the old oligarch or whatever it is within Xbox and Microsoft. And they've never been good at running their own studios over there apparently even though they were still allowed to run their own studios so maybe now microsoft and xbox phil spencer and everybody's might be tightening the reins a bit over at bethesda which means bethesda had to do what they had to do by closing the studios and moving other teams of other franchises and stuff but all it says here is if it ain't a big ip or it ain't a big um Money maker, as they're saying, stronger IP, bigger release, then it has nothing to do with their portfolio. That's what he's saying. 
Same thing here where you got Sarah Bond, where she has talked about nothing, said nothing about nothing. She seemed like the vice president of our country and how she says and says nothing and does nothing. Uh, and I hate, and I would hate to say, I hate to say that, but if you're not providing your own corporate voice, and I know being in a company or a corporation, they want you to say and do certain things under their banner and you, they don't want you to go outside their little, their little banner of stories, but maybe some people should try to be individuals, even go against the oligarch that is Microsoft, maybe talk, speak their own minds a bit, say, hey, I didn't like any of this stuff. We had to do it. It was something up on high. We had to do something. Why can't you just say that? Oh, because they're afraid they're going to get fired. Probably. If I was working there and I was like one of those manager CEOs of these parts of these co of Microsoft, like the Xbox or something, I would say it. I'd say, hey, I could get fired for this, but I'm just pl plain out saying it to the gamers and people out there. We've been trying. The people up on high said, hey, we got to chew some fat. We got to do some, make some hard decisions. It's something that, you know, that I, it was beyond my control and I had to choose the best things that I have could have chosen. And unfortunately, it was things that I really didn't want to close or cut, but I had to do it anyways. We had to do it because that's what they wanted. And it would have been nothing. That would have said nothing. I would have pointed nobody's direction except for saying, well, people higher up on the food chain wanted it to happen. I don't know. Uh, Xbox President Sarah Bond responds to the Bethesda studio cuts, points to lack of industry growth and needs to be to manage the business through its moment of transition, even though you just bought a $69 billion company called Activision Blizzard. Yeah. And there's no growth out there because ga games are becoming way too expensive. Game consoles, hardware-wise, have become way too expensive out there. So the more the co the higher cost on software and hardware makes a big difference to gamers out there that want a game a little cheaper, like hmm, Nintendo hardware. Nintendo hardware always a lot cheaper. Sure, it's not the latest greatest technology. But it's a lot cheaper. Games look great. They play great. They're a little bit cheaper, except maybe the Switch 2 might be $70 games because, you know, Nintendo's willing to do the, probably the Dark Deed 2 and get, pay, you know, it's, they got so many people in their ecosystem like, hey, Switch 2, Switch 2. Oh, wait, these Switch 2 games are all $70 now. Ugh. But they're just following the long line of other game, the rest of the game industry and saying their games are all 70 bucks as well. So, Nintendo will probably be able to get away with that because these are next-gen games for a next-gen system, so they could get away with it, and especially if they say, hey, our system's only like 300 bucks or something, three, $350. These other systems are like five, 600 bucks. Who are you going to buy? Who are you going to go to? Who do you love? Who do you hubba hubba love? You're going to go with Nintendo. And because they got other, they got a whole bunch of other games and stuff, third parties, what, what, wise and stuff, and they can keep it all cheaper. It's cheaper to game on a, a Nintendo system like a Switch. Same with PCs. If you got an average PC to a super modern PC or a high end PC like mine, there's stuff for everybody on that, and it can be a lot cheaper than buying a dedicated gaming console, spending five, six hundred dollars on one. Extra controllers, hardware, getting Xbox Live or Game Pass slash um, PSN, whatever it is now over there. That adds up. And then if you want to buy new games and stuff, or if you have to buy new games, see, this is the whole thing why I think Microsoft has the edge still with Game Pass. And I'm surprised Game Pass hasn't has been flatlining a little bit because shit. They get new games on Game Pass all the time. Maybe it's the whole fact, which a lot of people say, is the fact that Microsoft hasn't been putting out the games on Game Pass from themselves. They've been lacking on getting good games, a lot of good games, out on Game Pass themselves, so that's been hindering Game Pass and people getting onto Game Pass. Now, if they could build that Game Pass subscription service up, that would work 
that will work better. But here's my also my other thing. This is my, all coming from me. The whole thing about everything costs too much money, everything's higher price. Another thing, subscription services. They're everywhere. From watching TV to cell phone plans to everything you could imagine of. There's subscription this, subscription that, Amazon subscription, Netflix, Disney Plus, Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate, whatever you get, PSN. That adds up, and that's a lot of money, and a lot of people don't want subscriptions anymore. People are sick of subscription services, and what are people going to kill? They're going to kill the ones that don't make sense for them, like Game Pass and PSN and stuff like that. <laughs> and as gaming gets too expensive because everybody wants the latest and greatest for nothing because there's a lot of cheapos out there and gaming isn't the cheapest hobby out there. I should know. But still, the games industry doesn't understand that and they keep producing games at higher cost because they want to push those pixels to the point where you can't push them anymore and everybody's competing in that instead of just making great games and doing their own thing and not looking at the other guy going what are they making oh look at that game that game looks beautiful and then you'd be sometimes making good beautiful games sometimes making smaller games they're not going back and forth and that's why you get all this turmoil and this is why the games industry as i think of it is crumbling a little bit it might not falter even though nobody's saying it's going to falter, people say, ah, oh, the games, the gaming industry, the whole uh, thing that is the gaming industry, depending on what you want to call it, indie games to corporate gaming, which is Xbox and PlayStation, stuff like that, um, and Nintendo. That won't be as fine as the indie development game. There will always be indie developers. There will be people that make games by themselves. You hear about it all the time or in small groups, families, stuff like that. They put them up on Steam and GOG and stuff like that. And you can play them and you buy them for like five, six bucks and you have a ton of fun. And they give you a ton of value over the games. And if they add like DLC, they sell it to you later and they make money. But these corporations, they want hand over fist. They want to see the multiple zeros in their paychecks going over there. They want the millions to the billions and... That doesn't always happen that way. Not anymore. You s stretch yourself too thin. You charge too much for things. And you just don't put, a, put out interesting quality content. It's never going to succeed. It doesn't matter how much you stretch that portfolio or how much you want to downsize your studios and whatnot and close them. You're not going to go anywhere unless if you fix your internal thinkings. And it seems like Microsoft Xbox... Same with Sony. I don't know. Maybe Sony might change up their mind, but I doubt it. They don't think that way. And I don't think they're going to ever think that way. And then they're just going to get themselves more and more trouble, more and more debt. Look at look at um, Square Enix. More Final Fantasies, more of this. All these third party that they used to own, like the people that made, they had IDOS and everybody else. And then they gave, sold them off, gave them away, closed them up. And look, now they just got Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, and look, they're they're still losing money left and right, and they're like, our sales have been in the toilets. We're in trouble. Blah 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 blah. Well, why why are you in trouble? Oh, because you only focused on getting paid from one person, Sony, and you expected them to pay for your living wages over there, and you're you're thinking that you're gonna be made whole every time that Sony pays you guys for your one game that takes. For years to come out and you don't put it on xbox you don't put it on pc right away and stuff like that and you expect that you're gonna not make and then you say your quarter earn, earnings aren't where they should be and that nothing's ever made it to what you want your games to make hmm maybe that's because you're short sightedness and that's what it is with a lot of people out there hey you know what hey that's what happens that's what happens um that's on everybody um that's on everybody and uh i don't care <clears throat> uh let's see here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's see i did pre-order something talking about nintendo and 
of the original Switch. I actually pre-ordered the Nintendo World Championship Edition. Um, it's the Collector's Edition. I, I that's the only thing one I knew of. I bought it from Best. I pre-ordered from Best Buy for sixty bucks. Um, it seemed interesting as a collection, so I decided, well, why not I pre-order it? came with all these things and then you could do like little time trials of and stuff and i guess they used them in the the nintendo world championships and stuff and i'm like oh why not why don't i uh <laughs> get a piece of like semi history there and uh and try to uh you know see what go see what we can see there so i'm kind of interested in that game uh probably not something i'm gonna be interested in playing all the time but i do sometimes i buy games that even if i don't play them all the time and i play them like once and i don't play them again i like having them for nostalgia and history and stuff because i like to have them to my collections and for my collectible history collections and that's me and that's how i feel about that but uh i heard a lot of people are interested in it. i heard it's got a lot of pre-orders already so We'll see. We'll see what that's like. We'll see how that plays, all that uh, NES uh, World Championship collection. Like I said, I pre-ordered mine, a physical copy from Best Buy. They also saw it digitally, a lot cheaper, for like 39 bucks or something on Nintendo, on uh, on the Switch uh, store and stuff. So you could get it there as well, cheaper. Uh, the showcase is coming up. Now, I only know of a handful of them, like a couple of them, mostly the Xbox and and their uh, Call of Duty showcase direct directs that are happening on Sunday, June 9th, around 1 p.m. And then f after the Xbox game showcase, it's the Call of Duty showcase, which I will watch from Activision after that, where they talk about Black Ops 6. Um, that's on that one Sunday, June 6th, June 9th. Um, I'll be watching and talking over that as a podcast for that. And then on Monday... Um, June 10th, uh, there's going to be a Ubisoft Forward uh, happening live from L.A., I guess. And apparently they're going to show, like, s several games from that, like Star Wars Outlaws probably, uh, Assassin's Creed Red will be the headliner uh, this year. Maybe some other surprises from Ubisoft as well because they haven't – I think they passed – doing stuff for a little while and now they're back to do a, a ubisoft forward again so i'm really like i said i'm really interested in that new assassin's creed game that looks pretty badass i i, I really would love to play as a samurai ninja person and uh star wars outlaws looks interesting too i just want to see more of that game i want to see what what more goes on in that game and if they show gameplay of, of them both of star wars outlaws and the assassin's creed game um that'll depict on what which one of those two or if both i decide to get and what i get them for most likely it's going to be out for xbox because ubisoft doesn't put any of their games on game on xbox or pc uh not pc game pass but pc the pc store to sell it on for pc for xbox they only sell it in the ubisoft store which i don't i'm never going to buy anything from directly from their store uh, if it's not on the Xbox store, which that's another thing Microsoft should try to push and try to get some of these more of these third party developers to get their games in their Xbox PC store so they could sell these games on their Xbox PC stores and stuff. But they they probably won't because they, you know, they got Steam and Epic Game Store and stuff. And a lot of people like Ubisoft still think that they could just sell these games on their own stores and do a lot better because then they don't have to pay as much in the royalties you know stuff like that apparently in august 2nd there's supposed to be a thq nordic showcase um i don't know i i'm looking at this uh it doesn't look like anything anything i would be interested in and we don't know anything about nintendo direct there could be one coming for the summer there could not be we just don't know because nintendo don't say nothing until the last minute but maybe they'll show something for that and sony did sony say they were going to do anything maybe they're going to do it before everything else i don't know 
that's probably another thing. And then they got their other stuff. They got their other side games, showcases, and stuff. But I'm mostly going to focus on Xbox and Ubisoft because that's the last two big names. And, and not that Nintendo and Sony are big names. It's just you don't know when or where they're going to pop up in a showcase. So whatever they come out and pop up as a showcase or whatnot, or whenever they show off their own presentations, that's when I'll click in and say, hey, I'm going to do a podcast of this and this. But basically, the main two that I know of so far are Ubisoft and uh, Xbox. So, and Call of Duty, if you want to consider that. Uh, I'll probably put that in the same thing because it's back to back. So, um, yeah, so June 9th and then the 10th. The 10th one, the June 9th one for Xbox will be easy because that's Sunday and that's during the afternoon. So, I'll definitely be uh, able to do that. Uh, for the Ubisoft Forward, June 10th, um, I don't know when that's happening. It just says the date. didn't say the time uh, at all that I can see here. Let's see here. <clears throat> they got the PC gaming show and stuff. I don't really care about that. But they don't show a time for the Ubisoft one. I'll just wait till that goes up, and I'll watch it, and then I'll record it, and I'll talk about it. But that's about it. It's... <clears throat> After E3 E3 went away and everything else, and the games industry just got shrunk, everything seems to get, everything seems to got a lot of got a lot smaller as of game presentations and stuff. There'll probably be a lot of stuff uh, being shown and talked about during the time, but I don't know. It, it seems like everything's a little bit smaller and everything's been downsized a bit. I don't know if that's going to be a going forward a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. It, it for me, like I said, I'm not too worried uh, going forward because I am getting older, but I still got a huge backlog of games to still play, and there's still games coming out that are interesting all the time. But for the future, future gamers out there, what could be wanting to play? I don't know. And I know Grand Theft Auto might be coming out next year, so we got that looking forward to and the Switch 2 next year, so that's a lot of big stuff as well. I'm going to take a drink of some soda here because my throat is a little sore from all this talking. Uh, uh, going to clear the larynx a little bit here. Talk too much and you got your sinus issues. The throat is the first thing to go. Uh, anyways, I don't know. I, I, you, I would like to say I would know, but who knows? Nobody knows. You hear about it from Gersman and all the other podcasters and um, gaming journalists out there. Nobody knows. It's all up in the air. You got consolidation going on everywhere. You had all this consolidation going on with the journalist sites. All these wet little websites or bigger, semi-big websites just got consolidated and they all, a whole bunch of them got purchased and downsized into IGN and stuff or owned by IGN now and a whole bunch of other stuff went on behind the scenes and it's like the industry it got so big it got so big so fast it seems like that they just uh, the amount of people and then you know the price of money and pandemic basically because of the pandemic and probably our governments and stuff and everything went up and when everything went up in price, that's what just hurt the gaming industry, hurt the film industry too. Very big. All anything entertainment, it hurt very big. And and you know, you got subscription service, everything, money, 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 this, money, 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 that. And what's the first thing people save for in their pockets money wise from? Entertainment. It's like, oh, we'll purchase less games. We'll purchase less subscription services. We'll do that. Even I do it. I I don't do Amazon Prime anymore anymore because it's it costs so much money. And anytime I purchase anything, I notice that if I do purchase anything from Amazon, it's always over thirty five dollars anyway. So it's like, oh, I'll get free shipping anyways, and I'll wait because they don't give me next day shipping or anything half the time anyways. Even if I request it or whatever. So it's like, well, what am I paying $160 for if I'm not getting, you know, and you still got to get, you're still, and then when they did the ads, started the ads thing, 
on Amazon Prime Video, and it's like, well, you got to pay another two ninety nine or three ninety nine or something like that to get rid of ads, even though if you're a Prime member. That's when I said, screw that, Amazon. I, I'm done. I'm done with you guys on that stuff. So that's why I don't do Prime membership anymore, even though I've been doing it for years because it just wasn't worth it. It kept going up in price. Everything else keeps going up in price. Eventually, the problem is everybody's got to pay the piper. The piper keeps starts things off cheap and they're your friends and everything's great and everything. And then down the road, it's like, okay, we got to start making money. We're going to start getting that. We got all these people in our in our, in our uh, little wet, tangled webs. It's got to start making that money. And then they go full throttle it going. Prices are rocket, skyrocketing, this, that. We're changing things up. But they don't realize that people don't have to stick around for stuff. And people get up, fed up. You know, I had, I'd got every streaming service out there known to man before it. And then I gave up because everything got a higher in price. I had Netflix for a bit. And then they just kept raising the price and less content that, that I cared about. And then I'm like, nah, I don't care about Netflix anymore. Same with Disney Plus. I had all Disney Plus for three, three or four years. And it's like, well, we're going to raise the price. Now we're going to add ad. Now we're going to do this. And I'm like, I just want more content. Where's my content? And like I said, it had most of it was during the pandemic due to the pandemic residuals and stuff. And now everything's cost more housing. The world costs more. The world is very expensive now. The United States is extremely expensive now. And entertainment is the first thing to go from any household. Um, and that's how it is. That's how it goes. And if you don't evolve from that and you're not there's a lot of people that apparently don't make enough money for that stuff then they got to cut the fat or if you're like me and you're frugal and you know where the sales go and you're looking for sales deals and you sometimes you do the subscribe and then you cancel which apparently all these companies want to change that again change that where they don't want you to subscribe and cancel. They want you to subscribe for a year or something before you could cancel or something. They're, I guess there's people that are thinking about trying to do that. That's just going to make things worse for them because then people are going to say, well, if you want me to spend like 100 plus dollars for this year or something for the subscribe for the year, I'm not going to do that. Or, oh, you want me to bundle so I pay you guys more to bundle with like a subscription, like a TV subscription service. No, I'm not. I don't want those other things. So... I'm not going to do that and they're not going to make no more money. And it's like, eh, it's weird. It's a weird world we live in. That's why you got to just look for the wheels and deals and stuff. And if the games industry survives as a whole, great. If they can try to come up to a middle ground or something, if they start to falter and they fail, that's okay. We'll still have indie games, smaller games, which smaller games become big games. Look at Minecraft. It was a cheap, small game that became very big and very powerful. And it's still as powerful and big today. Look at games like Fortnite. You don't even have to pay a damn dime for Fortnite. You just need internet. And they're still making money. So games could do it. Games could do it. And they don't have to be the latest, greatest either. They don't have to be the most graphics intense. To those people that want their games to be so far, they want them to look so realistic and stuff, and they want to be graphics intense and sound intense and all this, and they don't want to pay a damn dime, those people could go fuck themselves. Because those pe cheap-ass bastards that don't want to pay for anything and they think they're entitled to shit, you guys could just go fuck yourselves because you're part of the problem too because you don't want to pay for anything and you expect to get everything for nothing because you bought a console. Or you paid for a subscription service uh, once and you're trying to s s uh, rip off games and stuff like that. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Because people like that ruin things for the rest of us as well. And, you know, it's a, it's a difficult world out there. But, hey, if you're like me, you find those deals, get the games when you find those deals doesn't matter if you, you if you can game on your PC great if you can get a if you have a console and you wait for a good sale going on 
Usually Microsoft has a lot of great game sales on Xbox and in the PC store. And that's where I get all a lot of games from. Steam, of course, Steam sales going on all the time. Steam's always rolling out Steam sales. Um, Sony, like I said, not in that world, so I don't know how many sales they got going on. They probably got some good sales on the PlayStation store as well. But Nintendo usually doesn't, unless if it's like third party or smaller titles have any good sales. Like the first party games, they still charge arm and a leg for, even years and years later, because they know they can't. Because that's Nintendo. They're the Apple of the video game world. So why don't we get into the game's news that is the game's news, and we'll do that now, next, now, uh, because my throat's getting sore, and uh, this podcast is getting long. And we got a lot of game's news to go through, and a lot of great stuff to talk about. So why don't we get into that uh, now? I think I'm pushing the red button. Here we go for the music. Watch and load it. Ready for the fight gang. Talk news. Gonna set the stage alive. Mr. Mike got the scoop. He ain't holding back. Dropping bombs on the gaming industry track. Hear the thunder. Feel the roar. Game talk news. Gonna settle the score. From E3 to PAX. They got it all. The highs and lows. Ready to bro. Okay, <clears throat> as I took a drink of soda, and boy, my throat is uh, getting sore by the minute, because I did a lot of talking this weekend. I did a lot more than I should have. So, <laughs> uh, after having a, a sore throat on f- Thursday through Friday and uh, having my sinus uh, allergy cold still, I, I, I should have been limiting my talking, but... Unfortunately, I like to talk on, about video games and a lot of stuff in the video game industry. I like doing podcasts. I like doing gaming videos, which I did two of them. And I got a third one I got to make for next week. So it's my fault. <clears throat> so what, if I ever lose my voice permanently, well, <laughs> I'll have to type it all out for you guys. I'll have to do the, the um, well, what's his name? Oh, shoot. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so Stephen Hawking, that's what I'm going to be like down the road, where I'm going to be like, Welcome everybody to the Games of Truck podcast. I am Mr. Mike, talking like a robot. That'd be pretty cool. That's why I, that's why I kind of like AI a little bit. I know a lot of people fear it, but shit, it can help you if you got your voice goes or something and you can't speak anymore <laughs> or whatnot because you talking too much and you just have your robot voice do it for you and you just think it and it does it for you because boy oh boy voice is shot so i think i talked about this many times before but i guess my xbox is very much after the fall of tv show really pushing to get this uh a new uh fallout game in the works from somebody in their game studios that are left over there at uh, xbox and um, they want it out sooner than, rather than later. But don't forget, you got to write the story for the game. You got to think of where the game's going to be and all that other stuff, settings, stuff. And then you got to make the game. So that's like three years, four years right there. Then you got to polish and all the other stuff. That's five years. So we won't see a new Fallout game for at least five years. At least. Unless somebody can push out a Fallout game a lot sooner. Um remakes we've been hearing about remasters like fallout 3 remastered stuff like that that stuff would be okay i would like that could tide us over i would love to see a fallout 3 remake and stuff i would play a fallout 3 uh remastered i keep saying remake a remaster to that and new vegas and stuff and have them work on next gen systems and stuff a lot better than they are we'll see about that um but you know still fallout craziness still today um after the show came out uh, a bit ago, but uh, it's only going to last for so long, and then people are going to go on to the next thing because it's not like there's any more show left because they ended, what, with eight episodes? Seasons were short. They don't make, like, 32-episode seasons anymore, or 12 or 32-episode seasons. This is like eight, eight episodes, and then it's done for 
like two years or something like that. That's crazy. That's really crazy. But uh, yeah, but yeah, they want to get another fall game. And you know what? I want another fall game because it's been too long. Too long. Just don't know who would do it. Maybe it's the Outer Worlds people. I don't know. Maybe after they com complete their other games, maybe they'll go back to do Fallout. I don't know. And then we got this stupid guy. I don't want to see this guy. Flavor. No, I don't want to see you. I, I didn't turn you on, but yet they turned this video on because, you know, automatic video. Mm -mm. So Call of Duty Black Ops 6 reportedly set to launch straight onto Xbox Game Pass. No shit. Who would have thought that wasn't going to happen? Apparently, some people out there were thinking, no, that's never going to happen. I know they bought Bethes they've just bought Activision Blizzard, but no, they're just going to sell that straight up, and I guess there were some talks up on high. But here's the thing. Microsoft, you, you've been saying this all along, Microsoft slash Xbox, Phil Spencer, that all games coming out of Microsoft slash Xbox Studios will all be on Game Pass Day 1. Now, if you're going to change that, that, that little, that little speech, that little uh, announcement of stuff on how that works, and you're going to change it up and say, nah, not all these games come out on Game Pass anymore, then that makes Game Pass more useless. And then that makes Game Pass look less, less of a value, and then you just devalued something really cool, and then you just killed yourself because a lot of people are are leaving Game Pass in droves, and then they're stopping, canceling their subscriptions, and then they're getting mad at you, and then everything starts to tumble for you because you guys just couldn't keep it in the rails. So, of course, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is going to get a launch on Game Pass. Now, nobody knows if that means it's just going to be the main game or the multiplayer or both or both separately. Because, you know, you got the online part of Call of Duty. You got the game, which is the story. Me, when I play Black Ops 6, I just want to see play the story. If all any of those other Call of Duty games or if all of them eventually come on the Game Pass, I just want to play their stories. I don't want to play online. I don't give a shit about online. I just want to play the Call of Duty stories like I did before. Then I'd get back into Call of Duty a little bit just to go through the campaigns and have some fun shooting up some people and yeah so don't worry people black ops 6 going to be on game pass day one because they're part of xbox now now if they weren't and microsoft didn't purchase them then of course they wouldn't be on xbox game pass day one talking more about fallout fallout 4 next gen update the second update includes new graphics and performance options and a slew of other fixes across the board for xbox playstation pc stuff like that um because after their first update they put out made everything more crappy mods were breaking apparently i know when i put to try to play fall for on my main pc here my monitors go crazy because the screen resolution crap does not work properly on on that game and then it's just fucks up obs and stuff and maybe they'll maybe they'll fix everything i know it still does its wonkiness on uh on uh what you call it on my rog ally sometimes it doesn't start you gotta you gotta restart fallout 4 like three times or something before i could get it to start on my rog ally and then i gotta tap the screen twice to get it to go to full screen because uh, i don't know but then it works and then it plays well um so when's this new next gen update coming out? Uh, they talk about a lot of fixes and stuff. I'm not gonna talk through them. I don't got the voice for it, but uh, uh, did they say when it's coming out? <clears throat> they don't really say here when this next gen update is rolling out, but I guess it's gonna be soon. Oh, it's coming out. It came out now. When's this? When was this story? May thirteenth. That was a long time ago. That was what? How many days ago? That was uh last last. Well, not this last week, but the last last week. That was on Monday. 
I don't. I didn't play any Fallout Four that week. I don't think on Monday. Oh no, I did. I don't know. Did I notice any updates? I gotta check. <laughs> I don't know. It says it came out on Monday, the thirteenth, fourteenth. Okay, maybe thirteenth. Well, well, I'll see. I'll check it out. I'll see if it if it actually improved anything or broke more stuff. And then all the people are saying, don't update more. No, but that's not. Please don't update Fallout 4 anymore because you're just breaking more stuff. And then we can't do any more mods. And then we got to try to get around your bullshit updates because you guys don't know how to update your games anymore. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> yeah. The call of the, the very scared gaming modding community. Apparently, there's going to be a new Doom game being announced uh, or revealed at the Xbox Game Showcase, as they're saying. It's supposed to be called Doom Dark Ages. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't have no stupid platforming in it. At least, hopefully, it doesn't have a lot. They could have, like, one or two levels that might have some platforms to do. But if it's all about jump, jump, fly around platforming and it's not, like, Doom 26, what was it, 2015, 2016? If it isn't like the original Doom, um, or first Doom 2015, 16 one that they did, then I, I don't want it. Because that's why I didn't play Doom Eternal, because it was just all jumpy, jumpy uh, platforming bullshit. And Doom is a first-person shooter, not a platformer. So hopefully they do it do it justice and they make it back to a first person shooter and it's supposed to have some like dark ages thing that's what they call it the dark ages it's supposed to be like something like that too where are they gonna have it where um with a more medieval like theme to it that could be interesting maybe a steampunk kind of thing i would like that i don't know i'm just thinking of it um but we'll find out at the xbox game showcase and see if this Doom the Dark Ages is something really cool or if it's going to be something that we're going to go, oh, no, not another stupid thing. Because I just want Doom. Give me more of that original Doom and Doom feel. That's what people like me want. I loved Doom. I loved playing that Doom. It was great. It was great that they made a whole new Doom and it was great. And then the Doom Eternal came out, or was coming out, and they were promoting it. I was like, ooh, this is going to be good. And then I saw some gameplay, and I'm like, uh, there's some platforming. And I know I hated the parts of Doom, the original Doom uh, that they came out with, with the platforming and stuff that they were doing at the end. They did a little bit of it, and I just didn't like it. And then this one, it's like, oh, it was all platforming and stuff. And I'm like, no. And this was at the time of also halo uh the halo came out halo infinite and that had platforming and i really hated it too and i'm like i don't want more of my first person shooters is turning into platforming first person shooters i don't know why they got to try to fuck up a good formula but apparently somebody over there at xbox loves platformers so much that they got to put it in everything and i don't need everything a platformer should stick with a platformer a shooter should stick with the shooter they should not combine and meet only maybe at a glance once in a great while, but uh, I hope they do a good, I hope they do this new Doom Justice because if it doesn't look anything like I want, I'm going to be like, no, I'll pass on that one too. Because like I said, that, that Doom, 2016 Doom or 15, I don't know, 15, 16 Doom, that was some good Doom. Mm -hmm. That was good Doom. Even though I was cussing, that part of that doom, I was still having a good ball of fun. And I beat it too, so. Uh -huh. uh, this is something that disturbs me a bit. But, of course, you know, everybody's got to get try to get their pounds of flesh. Especially two years after. When people think they can get some easy money out of people. And that's all it is. It's a money grab. Even though this is a, a part of a, a bad situation of their families. So, you know, here in America mostly... Kids with mental uh, disabilities or mental issues, maybe th this kid didn't have as many friends and had some maybe, you know, like I said, some brain issues, some mental issues, family, not being parents, not parenting, letting this kid do whatever they want, not 
not uh not really looking into anything plus apparently they said this kid was 18 years old and was still in school that must m mean that this kid must have been held back a time or two because i think when you're 18 you're out of high school already don't ask me i'm old man now i haven't been to high school for ages but if you're 18 and you're still in high school uh okay <clears throat> just saying um he probably was getting held back seemed like he was a disturbed individual took a ar-15 style rifle bought one apparently somewhere what was it what was it at uh what was it? Was it at, uh, I forgot if they have the kid's name on here or something. Daniel Defense, is that what it is? His name was Daniel or something? I don't know. Anyway, it was, oh, Salv Salvador Ramos. Okay. Shooting to an 18-year-old uh, Salvador Ramos. Okay. His name speaks uh, shoot him up kind of a kid. 18 years old, sure, try, could be tried as an adult at that time. But still, if you're living under your parents' roof, you're still the kid, at least till 21 or something, I think. I don't know. But um, apparently the parents, not being parents. So, you know, he shot up uh, Uvalid, 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 Uvalid. You you you, I can't say this. You valid laid, um, shooting at Rob Elementary. Okay. Um. So that was two years ago. This kid, this adult kid, shot up the school. Um, bad thing. A lot of that going around in in the United States mostly because we are bang bang. Bad, bad people, bad parenting, a lot of mental instabilities out there, and those people shouldn't be having guns for the mentally unstable types. I know, got our Second Amendments and everything, but that doesn't mean not everybody should have carry weapons, especially when we're not protecting our land and stuff like we used to back in the days. And, you know, back in the early days, back in the 1800s, I don't think people were as much cuckoo crazy up in there as they are now. So parents, where were the parents? Be they weren't parenting. They weren't paying attention. They're, they're at fault too. In my mind, they are. So instead of all that, two years later, you know, apparently he, he got this idea from a gun, an AR-15 style rifle from Call of Duty, and I guess he was talking about it on Meta or something or whatever, talking about it on social media and a bunch of other stuff. And so apparently these pe these uh, family members of the shootings of the their kids and people getting shot up, they want to sue um, Activision and Meta. Um, they want to sue the families. Want to sue Activision and Meta over their involvement and their kids getting shut up because this kid was mentally unstable and he was talking about shit on meta or looking up shit on meta and playing call of duty so it's all blame the video game and social media uh defense on this stuff now i guess they also sued before that the gun makers or something or whatnot and they won the settlement for that a lot less than it was but okay and why, for me, to me, it's like, well, why is the gun maker's fault that this kid, this 18-year-old bought the gun, he's mentally unstable, and these people now, we should have stronger laws about buying weapons. You definitely, instead of just a background check, they should do a, a mental stability check, maybe, maybe get some uh, a, psych a psychiatrist to sign off on that kind of stuff. I know that would be bad for you Second Amendment people, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You know, they could, you know, maybe because 
you're getting your reputations because there's a lot of good gun gun owners out there that own guns and lots of guns and they don't shoot up schools or anything and they're perfectly fine but your other brethren or other people that are not like you that have bad mental issues do and it's making you guys look bad and they're ruining it for you guys so some actions got to be taken eventually but suing a game publisher like activision for because they put out a game called call of duty which is a war game which means you could sue anybody you could sue hit for halo you could sue for this and that everybody makes shooter games out there grand theft auto all this other stuff so they're gonna try to sue them meta i don't know meta aka facebook and instagram though well facebook and instagram don't they usually scan their content for bad stuff whatnot you know in their platform they do have an obligation to maybe see if there's some bad shady shit that shouldn't be on their platform being put out maybe he was talking some racist shit maybe he was talking about shooting because i think that's what they were saying this the kid was talking about shooting up the school whatnot on meta or whatnot like that on facebook instagram whatever he does the social media kid did before he shot up the school and it's like you would think they would be monitoring monitoring that kind of shit and then not only take it off, but maybe call the cops, say, hey, we got some shit going down with this kid, blah, 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 blah. Not that a lot of police off agencies do anything anyways, because they got to wait till something actually goes down. A lot of people don't want to do detective work anymore or find out if something happens until it happens because everybody's at fault. They even sued. Apparently, these people sued even the police officers and shit before, too. They sued everybody. They're just going sue happy and trying to make money off of everybody. Even though, sure, you lost your kids. They all got shot to death, whatever. You know, I don't want to sound too unforgiving, but okay. You're going to sue everybody. You're blaming everybody for this shit. And then, of course, you got this greedy lawyer, which uh, he looks like a piece of work, too. I'm, I'm looking at this one lawyer guy's picture, and he looks like a fucking piece of work, too. It's like... He's just in it for the money. He doesn't really care. He'll say he cares. He might care a little bit, but he doesn't really care. He, he cares that he's going to try to get these big settlements and get a big payday off of this. And he's like, oh, all these grieving families, they're going to get me a big payday when we win big on these. And he says, well, he, he knows how to work these systems and work hard. If he got money from the gun manufacturers, we can get it from Activision blizzard now because they're owned by microsoft they got three trillion dollars they could just put that money into our pockets and of course facebook aka meta and stuff they got millions and billions of dollars they can afford to pay us to leave and then i get a lot of that too because that's how it all it all comes down to money if the families really wanted justice and they really wanted to get this stuff done they could say hey it's on the local governments, the governments, it's on the school system, it's on other parents. Start parenting these kids. Start doing, you know, if some of these kids look a little off or something, or they look like they might be mentally disturbed or whatnot, maybe give them a little bit of help. Even if they think they don't need it or want it, maybe give them a little bit of help. See, the, see if they're actually mentally stable or something i don't know i don't think that's a bad thing and then find out if they are gonna plan on shooting up schools or whatnot and not blame everything on video games and media and social media and stuff <sighs> they just go too far with it shit <sighs> i've been a loner for most of my young adult my young life not young adult but my young life when i was a kid i didn't have many friends I didn't have many friends. I was always a loner. What did I do? Played a lot of violent video games. Very violent. Everything. Shooters, sex, this, that. I looked at a bunch of stuff. I, I was doing social media back in the day, too. Reading stuff, watching stuff. But not once had I went to school and went, huh, maybe I'll take a gun or a knife or something and start shooting up or stabbing up the school body or something. Maybe I'll throw a chair through the window and smack a teacher down with a chair. 
Not once. And I'm a psychopath. I, I say this with all the truth in the world, and you can believe me or not, I'm a complete psychopath. I am a psychopath person. I am crazy as they come. But I don't got that tendency to go, I want to go kill somebody now. I'm going to go put a cap in that buster's ass. I'm going to go down and punch out some woman on the bus stop or the train stop. I'm going to go shoot up a school. I don't, I don't say that. I don't do that stuff. I don't think that stuff. And I know I'm psychotic in my own thoughts. And I love the most gruesome psychological bullshit that they come up with, which sometimes I'm desensitized to. That's how psychopathic I am. Like, I could play the most violent video games. I could blow up a whole city of buses of women and children. And I'm, like, laughing my ass off. Like in that Maniac game, you're killing mothers and children and strollers and shit. And I'm like, oh, ha, 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 ha. you're seeing them. Ah, and you're killing killing all this stuff, and I'm just laughing. But it doesn't make me want to go outside and kill the neighbor's kids or something. It's just I'm having my own gruesome fun in my own little world, and that's it. But I'm not thinking about doing that shit. Because even though I'm a psychopath, I can control my own psychopathic abilities. Apparently nobody else can out there. And those people that can't should get some help, and people should be watching them. And parents should be parenting. If I was a parent, I'd definitely be parenting my kids and making sure they're doing the right things and, you know, following the code of conduct, code of conduct, code of conduct, you know. The Ten Commandments, even though I'm not a, a religious guy or at all, but the commandments, they mean something still to me. They're, whoever wrote them had the right idea, mm -hmm. you know. Sure, you got the Constitution, too. It has its limits, but it has its things. There are certain things that people wrote back in the day that made some sense. And you can follow them the way, the way you want to, but all in all is they're there to make people better people, to keep people good and not psychotic, shoot up schools and stuff. And then you got these other assholes out there that want to cash in on that, just like the lawyer and these grieving families. <laughs> said that they're grieving but you should be suing the other parents like didn't they put those that one kid's parents in jail like there's this one kid that shut up something or whatever with a gun or whatever did something and then the parents actually were trying to run away and these parents looked like they were fucking convict psychopaths themselves they looked like and they're like what what and they're trying to run away or something they're trying to hide from the law and then they got caught and then they got jailed and stuff yeah, you could tell those are the kind of parents that need to be jailed. If you're going to do it, you got to go after the families of the kid, not <laughs> video games and social media. Because there's a, many people out there looking at many things, doing and saying many things. We're not all going on Xbox, playing violent video games, and then doing bad things after. It takes a special kind of somebody with a special kind of mind to do that. And I disagree with all the suing business of this, but hey, we're in that, we're in this culture now, we're in this world where we're sue happy, especially here in the United States. That's all they do. It's all the United States is made up of is lawyers and shit. And we got to sue this person, sue that person, sue for this and that and everything. And it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Uh, I think it's total BS bullshit. <clears throat> so... That had some thing to do about video games because Call of Duty was in it and they just don't want, like violent video games. And then you're going to get some new politician going out there. See what a, new, what a video game did? It caused this kid to shoot some people up. No, it's because he was this kid was really mentally unstable and bad parenting. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. But nobody wants to say it because everybody's scared and they're all full of bullshit. So apparently, which I find to be pretty funny, but it's true, half of all PlayStation gamers out there are yet to upgrade to a PS5, uh, Sony status reveals. Apparently, most of them still just play their PS4s. So half of all PlayStation gamers still play on their PS4s and don't ha play PS5s. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Interesting. Maybe because they fi- they they figured out that the PS5 was not worth it, that it was ex- expensive and not worth it, and uh, they could play most of these games on their PS4s. And why not? Why go to a PS5 when you could play all the same games really good on your PS4? Makes sense. Makes sense to me. That's what it mostly says. Um, <clears throat> Let's see here. And that's because the next-gen consoles have not done what they were supposed to do. And you could blame the pandemic. You could blame people not... You know, the industry as a whole getting more expensive. And games not coming out like they should be. And games costing more. And people not wanting to pay. And it's all that stuff. It's all it's all that stuff together, which, which is causing stuff like PlayStation. Even though they're selling way more than Xbox... Still only sold half of what they've sold of the PS4. <clears> that tells you something. When most of those people on both sides probably also have a Switch or two Switches in their houses. Because Sony or Nintendo, their consoles are cheaper and more family friendly to to own. Even though they can have some adult games on them. And um, overall... It, they're just easier to, to deal with than the consoles now. Now these consoles are getting so complicated. I'm sure a lot of people just don't want to get the new consoles because they're like, oh, this interface is getting more complicated and they're adding more ads to them and all this other stuff, and they just don't like that. Very understandable. <clears throat> Talking more Sony bad news because Microsoft isn't the only one closing down studios. Uh, PlayStation London Studio issues heartfelt goodbye after Sony Studio closure. Uh, they talked about how we had one wild and wonderful journey, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to get into it. Um, but, yep, they said their goodbyes. They wrote their note. And PlayStation London Studio, which I noticed a lot of... Um, <clears throat> I noticed a lot of... And they also laid off... A uh, number of PlayStation, other play, uh, people at PlayStation Studios, including Somniac, Naughty Dog, Gorilla, and Fire Sprite, um, as well. But the London Studio was hit with a notice of closure. A lot of companies are pulling out studios, and I think Microsoft was one of them too. But a lot of people are pulling out their studios out of of England, out of Britain, mainly because the UK over there, Britain, they're not really business friendly business friendly anymore so a lot of these tech companies and gaming companies are pulling out of there so that's probably one of the reasons why they pulled out of there because of the practices of the uk government and stuff and how they regulate stuff over there that could be probably one of those reasons as i'm guessing here but um the uk has been been losing a lot of uh, studios over there, gaming studios and tech studios and hardware stuff from gaming. The gaming industry as a whole has been pulling out of UK slowly, one by one. And that doesn't look good for a place where they want more competition, they want more businesses in there, they want more gaming businesses, but if you don't look attractive and you have all these stupid rules and regulations... Nobody's going to want to be there. And I think that's maybe one of those reasons. <clears throat> uh, this is a, this is basically a report slash rumor slash just occasional spit out. But apparently Sega reportedly wants Persona, Sonic, and uh, the Like a Dragon games, a.k.a. Yakuza games, to be annual releases. Um... So apparently Sega is trying to get these studios, which could be a bad idea. That sounds like it could be a bad idea. Um, To make the Persona series, the Sonic series, and the Like a Dragon series annual annual releases. Um, That might sound like a lot, but Reliable Sega Insider explains that this also counts as remakes, remasters, and spinoffs alongside the mainline releases. We've already seen plenty from Sega in the past few years, but it does suggest it'll remain the case moving forward. Okay, so does that mean we're going to see a lot of 
remasters and stuff of maybe more uh, Yakuza games going forward and Persona games. I know they did that. They might do Persona 4 Golden. They did Persona 3 Reload uh, recently. Um, <clears throat> I hope they don't try to go too overboard on that. Because if you put out too much uh, Persona and Sonic and, of course, Like a Dragon, a.k.a. Yakuza games, people will get tired of them. People will get tired of them. I, I probably want it because I love my Yakuza games. Persona, after playing Persona 5, 5, uh, 5 Royale, I was like, I tried getting back into Persona 4 Golden a little bit or Persona 3 Reload. I just fell off of them. I really would like to get back into them again, but I would just have to be in a, in a mood to focus on playing those games. But uh, mostly, I, I would definitely play more like a Dragon games, a.k.a. Yakuza games, new or old, remastered or what. I would like that. Bring out some collector's editions of those. I want some statues and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but they got to be careful because they got to bring out some other stuff as well because they can't just bring out... Um, They can't just be bringing out the same old, same old, because then eventually people are going to get tired of the franchises, and then those franchises are going to get duller, and then people are going to go away from them, and then you're going to lose all your money because you overdid it on your on a few key franchises instead of creating more different types of titles. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to quickly go through the rest of this stuff, hopefully, except for the last two. Uh, Valve's next game, reportedly an Overwatch-style hero shooter called Deadlock. That means uh, Valve is actually working on a new game. Something I don't really care about. I'm sure a lot of other people aren't going to really want to play. Maybe they will. I don't know. It is Valve. Maybe they'll release it for free and they'll have microtransactions or something. But if, especially if people want to play like Overwatch-style like games. So, um, not for me. Not interested in it. But what I'm seeing here, it looks okay. But, you know, Valve, they come out with a game every, like, four or five years. <laughs> but the last one was what? Wasn't it uh, Half-Life Alex or something for the VR headset? That was something they created. And that was it. They're mostly a game-selling company, you know, store company, more than creating their own titles. It seems very weird and chaotic there. If... um. The big guy himself over at uh, Valve, um, if he ever passes on eventually, who's going to get appointed as the leader there? Who's going to take over uh, Valve? And what's going to happen going forward, I wonder? Will they? Will the new leaders force the workers to start making games again over at Valve? Will we get a Half-Life 3 then? Or will the ship just continue to sail the way it always has? And people just keep making money at Valve and just keep going the way of the sail. And I don't know. I always wondered that. Because <clears throat> he ain't going to live forever. He don't, he don't look like the healthiest type of guy. Looks like he lives, lives a lot. A little too much. Doesn't really take care of himself too much. Gabe Newell... He, he does not take care of his body too much. I just look at him, and I look at his body, I look at his beard, and I'm like, dude, I know you, you're rolling in dough. And I'm not just talking about money dough, but shit. You don't need to be playing the part in the Wally movie. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't have a hover chair for himself, but boy. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Nintendo acquires Hogwarts Legacy port studio from Embracer Group. So Nintendo embraced something from Embracer Group. Apparently, this was the studio that uh, ported some games like, like they said, Hogwarts Studio or Hogwarts Legacy. And they did that uh, co very horrible Mortal Kombat 11 port that everybody really liked to hate. Even though they ported it and they got it to work on the Nintendo Switch and stuff, so they actually tried to do the best of their ability to um, to get a, a somewhat decent game out onto the Switch of these ports. So I, what everybody's been guessing, and I've been pretty much looking at into that, Nintendo says, huh, these guys did a decent job, even though they didn't do a 100% good job on these games, but... They got them ported and they got them to work and 
on our system and got him to run on our system decent semi what decently i don't know um so maybe nintendo said hey why don't we just buy him get him from embracer group embrace him from embracer group and use him for our own ports or internal ports as an internal port studio and have them do a better job at for us give them get them more money um and stuff like that they're called shiver entertainment um they did more ports than hogwarts legacy and mortal kombat one but you know maybe they can get them to a point where they could do a really really good job on ports i don't know they've seen something in them nintendo seen something in them so they had to buy them Small little comp studio within a embra big embracer group. But that ship uh, teetering back and forth. Why not? <clears throat> so even though this isn't getting an really officially announced uh, until, what, June 7th or something, did they say? I think they said this is going to be fully announced on June 7th, right? Right? It doesn't say in this article. Why? Why don't these articles ever say anything that I need? Uh, oh, June 2nd. Okay, it's ahead of its June 2nd release. Is that when it's getting released, or is it supposed to be talked about? Hmm. <clears throat> I think they meant talked about. I don't know if it's being released at the same time. Maybe it is. But apparently, uh, it's called, it's the Rogue Ally, but it's not the Rogue Ally 2. Now, note, this isn't the Rogue Ally 2. This isn't the sequel to my Rogue Ally. This is... What Steam did with the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck, and they made that newer one with the old LED screen, bigger battery, a little bit stuff to make it a little bit better, uh, better looking, running, and that's what the, that's what Aces is doing with this Rogue Ally X, as they're calling it, and it's supposed to be in black, uh, presumably. Uh, it's supposed to have bigger battery in this newer new Rogue Ally, the Rogue Ally X, the bigger battery. Like double what the size of the original batteries in the Rogue Alley uh, was, so that means you'll probably get double, the, double or more of the power of these batteries in your Rogue Alley. So if you want four, two to four, or three to four hours of gameplay or more, depending on your games to be played on that, bigger batteries will do a better job on that. Uh, it's supposedly supposed to have not instead of 16 gigs of RAM, which I always complained was probably the biggest weakness of the console, even though a lot of people disagree and they say, well, it's also got because of the CPU and the GPUs are a little underwhelming. Yeah, but a little bit more video memory would also help as well. You know, I always predict, I always said a little bit more video RAM would do a beef better job, especially when you, you only had 16 gigs to play with and only eight being able to be used for the game itself, and then you got the rest of it being sucked up by Windows. And they're supposedly supposed to make, like, the Rog Ally X is supposed to have, like, 64 gigs of, uh, of, uh, okay, this one says the rumor will come with 24 gigs of memory. I thought it was supposed to be... Let's see, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20. Okay, 24 gigs. I can understand that. So eight more gigs of memory from 16. So 24 gigs of memory. So forget what I said about the other one. Uh, so 24 gigs of uh, faster LP DDDR5 memory, which would give games and whatever eight gigs more overhead, which is good because Windows, like I said, Windows 11 does use up a, a good windows in general uses up a little a good chunk of memory to do stuff even behind the scenes especially if you have other software programs open everything uses some memory and then when you want to put a game on top of that stuff that uses a good a chunk of memories for the video and the graphics and all that stuff um that will be cooler that'd be cool i like that um so more graphics and it's supposed to come with a terabyte hard drive in there like one terabyte of hard drive space i think don't quote me on that this is all still being rumored specs so one terabyte of uh hard drive in there but it's going to come with a bigger a a, lar a longer m.2 to 2280 slot 
um, so that you could put in more M.2 options. You don't have to just get those little bite-sized chocolate like cards. You could get the longer ones, the more rectangular M.2 drive cards to put in there, drive. So those usually go up to like four terabytes now. Eventually, hopefully, they'll go up to like eight terabytes or so. I would want, I would hope that the M.2 drives get bigger in size down the road. You know, I know memory companies out there don't ever want to go past like four terabytes or whatnot now in these memory units. But come on, guys, make it eight terabyte M.2 drive. I would totally buy one. I would totally put that into my future ROG Ally down the road when the, the real deal comes out. But um, still, overall, that's cool because that means if you want to upgrade your one terabyte to a two terabyte or anything bigger if it comes out down the road or four terabyte you could do it because there is a four terabyte out there for the m.2 drives so that'd be cool that'd be cool um and what else they said that were the sticks a little bit better they didn't say they were going to have hollow effect sticks or anything everything else seemed to be the same, except for, I guess, they're supposed to be two USB-C ports, and they were getting rid of their proprietary Asus uh, jack port for the top for their video card, external video card thing, which is cool. So if I can have, like, one USB-C on the top, one on the bottom, or two on the top and one on the bottom, that'd be cool. And they're supposed to move the micro SD card slot maybe a little bit somewhere else, and that's not just because of the so-called heat issues. But mostly because they're bored, they had to change what what went where on their motherboard on the unit. But they said also that meant that the micro SD card slot was going to move away from the heating vents a little bit more, and they're making the fans a little bit smaller but faster, and more much better airflow for that and stuff. They're doing little various things, but yet uh, the Z1 Extreme chip, AMD Z1 Extreme chipset, is going to be the same as it was before and the rog ally x's screen is not going to be oled it's going to be the same screen as is on my rog ally which that screen is beautiful as is it ain't oled but it's still beautiful so this is just a, a like i i hate to say minor upgrade it's upgraded a lot but not enough for me personally to purchase one right now i'm happy with my rog ally now especially on how much money I put into that thing. But down the road, or for new people like you guys, if you wanted to get a ROG Ally X, or you were waiting down to see what was coming out there and you were debating to get a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally, maybe this ROG Ally X might be for you, especially if you could upgrade the the hard drive, uh, the, the M.2 drive bit larger, and you could put like a 4 terabyte in there. Imagine, 4 terabytes of games on that portable handheld. And then you got more video memory in there, 24 gigs of that LLPP -L -P -P 5 memory. Whew. That's going to be good for gaming. I'm telling you, that'll make your games run even smoother. Bigger battery life, so if you do play it off a of battery, sure you have more. I don't personally care about it, but other people do. And then you got two USB-C ports, so you can plug one in for power and plug the other one in for video out. Why not? I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. Um, and like I said, their screen, it's beautiful. It, even though it's not an OLED screen, it's a 120 hertz VRR screen. Um, it's got, what is it, 600 nits to it, so it gets very bright. Like I said, I go outdoors to play this thing. I can see that screen outdoors. Can't do that with a Switch. Can't do that with a lot of other things. Can't even do it with my phone. But that... I can see the screen outside, no problemo. So, yeah, if it's your first time purchase, maybe. And there's, I guess they also said the back of it will be a lot easier to open up and to upgrade parts or fix it and stuff. They'll make it easier to fix and upgrade parts in it as well, if needed to be. But um, <clears throat> even though I'm not going to get one personally, and I'm fine and happy with mine, and it's been almost a year in, and I'm still having a great time with it, which I still got to do that video of it on it. Um, if you're a new gamer, I would say go ahead, get it. I, I think it's supposed to be like $7.99 or something they were saying. They're going to announce all this on June 2nd because they said the full reveal 
will be on June 2nd. I will definitely look at that and watch that video closely to see what they're announcing for that. But I'm seeing uh, that there was going to be... <clears throat> I heard rumors that it was going to be like $7.99, which makes sense because the Raw Galley, when I bought it, was $6.99. So I can understand if they made the new one $7.99 due to the fact that... Uh, Due to basically the fact that there's more stuff in it. There's more memory, a bigger M.2 drive in there, more power, more battery, more weight. And they tweaked a few things. I can see that being $100 more. I could see that being $100 more, definitely. Especially when the originals only came with 512 gigabytes of uh, storage and stuff like that. And it was like $699 and all that. So all in all... Uh, all uh, better system up a little slight upgraded better system you know a revised model and um yeah maybe it'll kick ass even more on games and stuff and they're also tweaking they're gonna tweak and make improve uh armory crate even better i haven't had any problems with armory crate going forward i think armory crates uh been working fantastic on my rug ally i know there's certain individuals out there in the gaming uh uh, talk out there that still hate Armory Crate and hate Asus, the Asus Rug Alley for a passion, and they always bring it up. And it's like, dude, you only used it the first week it was out. You never tried to test it out fully. You never, never gave it a chance. And, you know, what can I say? I love my Rug Alley. I'll be playing that sucker probably tonight. So... There you have it, folks, for that stuff. Like I said, I'm waiting for the new rug guy. And I don't care if it comes out in, like, another two years or three years or something. I'm sure Aces is looking because they even say they're looking and everybody else is going to be looking. And I'm sure they're waiting to see what other people are doing. And they're probably waiting to see how the whole uh, Snapdragon, new Snapdragon processor is doing for going to do for Windows and stuff like that going forward because maybe they'll put a – snapdragon in the next one or something and it'll be really cool and then they could put a cool graphics in there and we'll see we'll we'll see going forward how what people will think of going forward and seeing how chips and stuff advance down the road for gaming pcs and handhelds and stuff like that and when they do and announce that announce that true new um state-of-the-art uh rug ally down the road the real Rog Ally 2 and not the Rog Ally X, I, I'll be in line for that. I'll be, I bet there'll be enough time it'll be like, okay, I'm ready to get go with a newer Rog Ally. Uh-huh, you're going to give me what? How much memory? Maybe they'll have more SKUs where you could choose how much memory you could want in your system. Oh, I want it so I could put a big M.2 drive. Maybe you could put two M.2 drives in there and have double the storage space, whatnot, in the future one and you could pick how much battery life you want in there. You could have an OLED screen on there. Possibilities are endless for that. But that's how I think. Anyways, folks, thank you for joining me on this lovely day and this lovely podcast of the Games Attack podcast. I'm surprised I made it through without any real serious uh, faults to my own self. But, uh, yeah, we are done here. The Games Attack podcast, everybody. Here at oldfreakygamer.com where you can subscribe to it or you could go to any of your major podcasting apps to subscribe for free. Of course, it's not it doesn't cost you anything. You know, subscribe for free on oldfreakygamer.com or your major podcast apps. You just go into them, go type in the Games Attack podcast, not the Games Attack audio cast. That was my old. If you want to listen to that, you could do that too. That was my old podcast. But I upgraded to the Games Attack podcast, so that's all my new stuff going forward. And um, <clears throat> you could also watch and subscribe on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash oldfreakygamer. You can watch my the Games Attack podcast a lot. Well, not live, but video version, which is nothing special. I just put up a little graphics. I, you see my ugly face more. That's about it. But I, I do post it as a video on YouTube now. Because it's easy. Because I record everything in OBS, so why not? And, um, yep, upcoming Friday, probably be Fallout 4 as a, a game on session. I don't know what I'm going to do, if I do or not do. We'll see. Um, this 
upcoming week if I do a game on set or game on or let's play I should say session I might we'll see we'll see if I do anything like let's play or something for this week um <clears throat> I never I never know until I do one but uh definitely a follow up for it for game on this week this Friday uh uh anything else anything else mm. well June will be here soon um and then it'll be almost, you know, the non-E3 weeks, the Summer Showcase, which will be a little smaller and shorter, easier for me to cover. And then after that, uh, my semi, my vacation. I'll have my six-day vacation after that, starting on my birthday, the 14th of June. And then I'll be 38 years old, so that will be happening. I cannot wait for a nice six days off. Eating nothing but sausages and stuff. But uh, when does the next podcast come out? Because that, that should be coming out after. So we got one coming out this. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, so what am I doing here? So next week, so this Monday is where I'm talking to you, for you guys. That'd be the 27th. And then no on the 3rd. Okay, so... And the next podcast would be the 10th of June. So it would be right before my vacay and birthday. Okay. Okay. That will also be around, like I said, the showcase thing. So either there will be a, a full Games Attack podcast or it will be just the shows. haven't decided on that one yet, but we'll see going forward because – the next time you'll see me doing this podcast and stuff and videos will be the um, summer showcases. So just wanted to make sure on that. Anywho, folks, I'm done. My voice is completely fucked up right now. So everybody, I am out of here. Thank you for listening, watching, listening. Uh, let's see here. Uh, i got to push the right button here. So everybody, this is Mr. Mike signing out saying game on, game hard. World Conquest, enjoy your gaming Memorial Day weekend, and catch you again on the gaming side next time. So everybody, this podcast is now game over, man. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working out maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so i can make a better me better believe in your mind because it's everything you can mold shape find anything all it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity it's mind over everything and when i feel like this i'm immortal when i feel like this i'm immortal when i feel like That's a good game. Enjoy your gaming. Dude, go fuck yourself.